And a very good evening to you. Might be afternoon, might be morning, whatever it is. Welcome along. And if you're watching on Catch Up, also welcome. Uh, and if you can get to join the live shows, do, because it's good fun. Um, but if you're all here for the live show, thank you for joining us. Everyone that's in the chat room, there's a whole bunch of people in there. Lots of new names and lots of regulars too. I'm not going to go through the list because it's long and extensive. But we love that you are here. And we've got a great show lined up for you today. Some really interesting news topics and some really interesting guests. Uh, which we'll go around and meet in just a moment but before we do can I just get the pleasantries out of the way down below there you'll see there's a like button there's a subscribe button uh, if you could hit both if you haven't hit them already that would be fantastic um, also if you want to find us on any of the social media networks we're all under the same handle at ProSynth Network on Twitter Instagram of course the group is that's on Facebook and of course here which is i guess most of you are watching us on on youtube as it is um if you want to make a donation to the channel because that's how we keep going we're completely self-funding or shall i say audience funded crowdfunded even that's a term maybe somebody should coin that one day um we, we we're funded by you you keep us going so it's your fault um but you do so with uh, gusto uh, might i say um and you can do that in a couple of ways first of all you can use the the wonderful youtube system that allows you to send these super Super chats or super stickers or whatever they are but apparently when you click that little dollar sign or pound sign you can put in a sum of money and it comes into our account and you know YouTube take their cut and PayPal probably take their cut but we do get some of it and it goes straight into the pot that funds uh, this operation so thank you for that and of course if you don't want to do that you can also donate to us at this very address right there uh, it's also clickable in the description it goes to our paypal donation page so if you want to do that that would be absolutely fantastic we love you for it thank you very much i'll get rid of all of those that's the stuff out of the way um as I said we've got lots of really good news topics uh today um, some re really interesting uh things to talk about with some wonderful people we're gonna meet uh, our guest in just a moment but first of all I'm going to bring in uh, my regular co-host because Ben isn't here this week we'll explain in a minute um, I'm going to bring in my regular co-host from the other side of the world in California <laughs> Mr. Chris how are you with Doing your Def well. Leopard shirt Doing well. yeah gotta love Did, a bit didn't... of le leopard haven't you <laughs> oh absolutely yeah no it's a uh... You know, been been looking forward to this week, and of course, it's always great hanging out with you, Rob, and to have Dom on, and and for the first time, Mike, and it's already been a lot of fun. And also, just you know, I want to say thanks to everybody in the chat because the chat is always um, so interesting, and we've got already so many interesting people in there. I see Dina and uh, uh, Chris is in there, and then of course our um, Andrew Brooks and Sasquatch moderating. So yes, thank good you, morning, our everyone. Yes, good morning, good afternoon, and good night. And everyone that is, uh, we've got quite a few moderators in there. So thank you uh, for your contribution to the show. It is greatly appreciated. Thank you to Wagyu for that first super sticker. That is fantastic. Thank you very much for that. Um, I see um, we've also got Mike's boss in the room, so he's going to have to be on his best behavior now, surely. But we'll come to him in just a moment because you might have noticed that uh, we said that Ben isn't here because Ben is actually earning a crust. He's out gigging tonight. I was kind of hoping he might just buzz in on his phone and give us a, a bit of a live, you know, kind of rig tour, but uh, nothing from him yet. And he's probably forgotten all about us. But his shoes have been filled more than considerably <laughs> with Mr. Thomas. It's <laughs> <laughs> oh dear this techno gives do you know who you you look a bit like um tyson ben. fury oh yeah yeah no i downloaded it but i couldn't i didn't have a chance to 
Give another chance to give it a, a test, you know. Your, your beard like is too brown. Do you like me at? <laughs> Very good. Horny. Uh, anyway. <laughs> yes, it's me. It's me again, everybody. Hello. <laughs> Great to have you back. <laughs> Thank you. Unfortunately, my wife has gone down with COVID. Yeah. And uh, yeah. so it's been, uh, I wasn't even sure whether I'd be doing a, a, a stream tomorrow, but it looks like we'll be able to do it. It kind of depends cool. on her. But myself and Lula May are fine. And Excellent. I'm just realising quite how much my wife actually does, to be mm. honest, because I'm running yeah. around doing all that, that stuff. <laughs> <But> <laughs> don't like, tell what? her that. No, 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 no. Hopefully she's not listening. Yeah, is, that, is that what you do, love? Yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> dear, oh dear. Well, it, it's great to, to have you here, um, as you. usual. And uh, yeah, we... The whole PSN community sends Mrs. Wiggly our love and wishes Absolutely. to get better very, very soon. Thank um, you. So, and I hope that yeah, you and Lula may manage to kind of stay clear of it all. Uh, I've got my boost. I've got my flu shot tomorrow. I've got my booster jab for COVID next weekend. So we're all um, hopefully we've managed to avoid it so far. Touch mm. wood. Mm. Won't get it. Anyway. Anyway, so that's all the kind of the, the regular people out there. We've got a very special guest for you. He is um, an incredibly knowledgeable man, so much so that he's gone and written a bloody great book about the very things that we talk about on the show, i.e. synthesizers. This is Synth Gems 1. It's um, published by the Bukes uh, Publishing House, and its author is none other than Dr. Mike Metley. Unmute. Welcome. Robert... <laughs> I want to thank you very much for having me on your program today. Uh, it's most appreciated. And um, I would like to say to the worldwide audience, hello, all you nice people in my computer. <laughs> Welcome, Mike. Um, it's look, you've great to be here. Thank you. You've been a regular fixture in the chat room for some while now, and we appreciate all the input there. And now we've been brave enough to throw you onto screen. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Hopefully we won't regret that. No, I'm sure we won't. Um, we're going to be talking to you, uh, obviously, about the book, mm -hmm. um, because, you know, that's one of the reasons why you're here. But also you do have an extensive, extensive knowledge of all things electronic music because you were, correct me if I'm wrong, um, you, you worked for Recording Magazine. And for the last five years of that, you were the magazine's editor. So you've, you've been in the biz a long while. I, I have, in fact. Um, although I should, first of all, I want to say one thing. Uh, Dominic. Uh, best wishes to Mrs. Wiggly. I hope she gets uh, better soon. And Chris, Thank you so much. before I forget, please pat Sola for me. Big dog <laughs> lover you. here. Uh, anyway, uh, so yes, I was in fact the editor. I was on the editorial staff of recording for 23 years. Um, and I was the editor for the last five years. I was the guy in the hot seat. Um, and I really thought I was, I was a barnacle. I really thought they were going to have to <laughs> scrape me off. But after about 20 plus years um i decided to move on because um um recording is a pro audio magazine so we were primarily dealing with microphones speakers audio interfaces that sort of thing but my love has always been uh, uh electronic music and there haven't been that many opportunities to write about a synthesizer in that magazine and with 40 years uh, plus of doing electronic music, I figured it was time for me to shift a little. So I launched my own consultancy, Atomic Words, and I'm now um, working for a bunch of clients in the industry. And my, my favorite and biggest client is, of course, Bukes. And uh, a quick uh, hello and manga talk to uh, Kim Bjorn, who is in chat room at this Indeed. point. Hopefully Kim is into about his third vodka because <laughs> he was absolutely terrified uh, at, at what I'm at what I'm going to be uh, at what I'm going to be uh, well hopefully not talking about. <laughs> um, we do have we do have a little bit of the uh, we do have a little bit of the NDA thing happening, but you know, no, no hi worries. Kim. We won't press you too hard on any of those things. But listen, welcome uh, to the show, and I'm going to try something here. Uh, let's do this. Hey, it works. So just before we came on air, I found out that StreamYard, the, the service that we use, has just introduced, after many months of me shouting that they should do, they've just introduced hotkeys. So I can now switch camera shots without having to worry about pointing my mouse or I can just go, you know, click this thing. So um, I'm a little bit excited, but also I apologize now if I get it wrong. And um, maybe you hear somebody talking, but you see something else on the screen. That would be awful, but <laughs> we'll try. We'll keep going. And also, um, there you go. Sit now. Now, now look, come on. My hand. And I was just about to say <laughs> that the other thing that they've introduced is teams and admins. And I've given that guy 
over there. Admin control. So at any point, he might pull the plug on me. Um, it's, it's a bit dangerous. But we'll see. It's just a, you know, in case I have a heart attack live in there, which is always my greatest fear. Uh, Chris can just step step in, and uh, somebody else can dial nine nine nine. So yeah. <laughs> Rob has probably died, but we'll keep going with the show. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, and I, I, no, seriously, I would expect you to do that. I would expect you have my permission. To it's what he would have wanted. It's, it's what, what he would have wanted. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Let's now yeah. let us now celebrate his life. Yeah. 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 Yeah, in latest news, Rob is dead, but we expect the condition to stabilize and we'll be in contact. Yeah. Too. yeah. What you mustn't do is start divvying up the collection behind me, between you. <laughs> that ain't yeah, going to happen. Yeah, who wants FM synthesizers? Everybody. <laughs> Everybody. Everybody wants FM. Uh, talking of which, if you if you if there are any Essence FM owners, um, they dropped a new firmware yesterday and it's fixed a no few nice little bugs. So, um, there you go. Right, um, we are. Oh, uh, before we do, I uh, completely forgot. Chris Blythe, another fellow Fairlight owner, um, has donated five pounds through uh, the uh, Super Sticker, a Super Sticker service. Um, and also, if you uh, if you like a bit of Fairlight, I've um, got some news coming up for you later on about me and a Fairlight. But Chris has got some brilliant videos because Chris has been a Series Three owner for a while, but he decided to build one from scratch out of all, uh, parts of other things. It's kind of a Franken CMI, um, and it's a great series of videos on YouTube. So go and watch those. I don't know if you finished it, finished that yet, Chris. Maybe you can keep us. Uh, up to date on that and maybe we'll get you on the show to talk about it one day but anyway right i'm gonna get comfy now um let's do some news shall we um there was a a big piece of news from a big well, I say a big piece of news from a big company uh, i know mike wants to get his teeth into this one um but this is the news that roland have launched two new two new boutique instruments First of all, we've got the JD-08, which is their boutique version of the JD-800. And uh, there's also the JX-08, which is a JX-8P clan. I'm finding, I'm finding that one more interesting than this one. This JD-08, if I have to say so myself, it looks the mutt's nuts. But when you think that it's only about this big, and those sliders, those faders, have probably got something like a one and a half centimeter throw from top to bottom because there's so many of them on there. I remember the JP-08 had about two centimetre throw. These look smaller, and I just don't know. I mean, I've got fat, stubby fingers. This isn't going to work well for me. Um, lots of memes go... I recommend surgery. Yeah, quite. Uh, lots of memes coming out at the moment with pictures of the JD-08 in the, uh, the, the keyboard, which obviously is a separate uh, purchase, with lots of red goo coming out from underneath, which I think was rather funny. I think mm -hmm. Roland missed a trick with the cloud version of this because they should have done it after 30 minutes of use. Red goo starts dripping out of the bottom of the plug-in because that would have been easy to do. But anyway, um, so we've got the JD-08, and I'll throw up a picture of the JX-08 later on because that, I think, is a bit more interesting because it's a a recreation of the JX8P, which is this lovely um, analog, sort of hybrid analog synthesizer um, that had a great tone and has not been really done uh, in hardware, certainly in recreation since. So um, we'll talk about that in a bit. But um, who wants to go first? Hands up to talk about uh, the JD08. Any takers? I'm going to hand off to one of your hosts because when I get started, it'll be hard to stop. Okay, right, Chris, <laughs> your thoughts, sir, on the JD08. <laughs> you got to say they did a great, great job on the look of it. Uh, <laughs> it's small as it may be, they did. I, I just think it looks great. But mm. um, yeah, I've been playing with the uh, JD800 uh, cloud version and have been enjoying it. Um, I, I guess it's pretty much just the. Uh, the Xenology version uh, ported over. And uh, I guess the filter may be a little bit different, but um, it has some really nice sounds in it. It's a very impressive synthesizer. Um, I think this, you know, would be a little bit difficult to deal with <laughs> in this form factor. I did have the JP-08 for a short while, and uh, it was, again, very difficult to use compared to the System 8. So that's where maybe something with the knobs, like um, I still have the little... Uh, jx03 oh, yeah. and that works out a little bit easier to program but um i know so so for me like you know the thing is like i i, I like the acb and dcb stuff a lot better and i'm kind of disappointed that they didn't go that way now of course with the synthesizer it's not as big of a deal 
Uh, but when I'm looking at the spectrum of what people are saying online, there tends to be a lot of rejoicing that's got a higher note count of, um, I think it was 20 for this one versus Maxi the four. Yeah, well, well the JX, yeah, the JX08 has got a maximum of 20 depending on the, the patch mm. that's, that's, you know, obviously there's stuff going on. But this, I think, has the full 128, the, the JD08. So, uh, oh, oh more, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The original, yeah sorry. It? The original, yeah, was the original like 64, I think. So it's it's kind of like, double yeah. i think so yeah yeah absolutely I, I confuse the two of them oh it's easy to do it's easy to do um dominic have you are you a, a boutique person do you like have you used any of these is this your thing yeah there oh yeah look there you go um those are two of the the jupiter 8 the jp 8 and uh sh 101 clone the sh01 mm -hmm. i had two of those so that i could get the polyphony back to what the jx uh the jupiter 8 was because they are the only they're only kind of four notes um which is like two notes when they're in uh, dual mode yeah um and i've had those for a while and i love them and behind i kind of built this jamming station behind me um which i wanted to do dub mixing on more than kind of jamming mm -hmm. and it kicked off when i bought uh, a deluge i thought this is a different workflow I'm, I'm coming up with different stuff i'm not sitting down in front of logic or ableton with the same template and the same synths and going down the same old road every time this is breaking me out of my mundane kind of uh, writing mode like, this is great you know and then you see people like inky and the, and the jamming crew <laughs> doing stuff and you think oh yeah this is great you know uh and that never particularly flourished but it it has allowed me to kind of root stuff through my, my patch bay which is to the left into a mixing desk so i can fly up a fader and spin in some space echo or something Do you know what i mean i can actually play around with stuff which yeah. is brilliant so i thought well if i get a couple of little keyboards over there um and uh basically a little sampler and i can plug in my my um modular stuff and a drum machine i've got tr8s and a tempest and some bits and pieces i can i can really have a laugh over here and i can integrate them into the rest of the studio and it's worked really well and that it was perfect for those the uh i'm pointing over the wrong shoulder perfect for those <laughs> um and i yeah I, I, it's hopeless unless you're very close with tiny hands you wouldn't want to to adjust the sounds that much other than maybe you know doing the classic turn the filter up and down and and yeah Mod, you know, modulating stuff in real time which is great you you definitely wouldn't want to be sit there all the time but they are um programmable over midi remotely and yeah you know that's where they come into their own um what i found was when i've been using roland cloud it sounds at least as good and so it's great to have something that doesn't use up the processing power but i'm yeah. not that short on processing power it's i mean it's i'm not sure I, I was considering this week whether i should hang on to them or whether i should just sell them and, and and invest in something else because i can get what i need out of the roland cloud mm. except for when i'm playing playing around live back yeah. there but i'm thinking i could get something else to sit there um you know, hydrosynthy or you know, obviously mm. a different price bracket, but there, there might be something a little bit newer and mm. more useful because I ha I'm a Roland fanboy. I have a lot of Roland stuff. I've got a JX8P and a 3P and an MKS80 and an MKS70. Like a lot of them from probably from when they first came <laughs> out because I've been using them <laughs> since then. Um, and I'm, I'm a massive fan. I've never had a Jupiter 8. So that was my, my kind of throw to them. Um, I have a JD990, which is oh, the... Yeah enhanced rack mount version of the jd800 mm. and it's wonderful it's a really lovely thing yeah um and i probably well i wouldn't need to buy the the boutique version um but I, I, all i would say is that if if you don't need the unit the cloud is now so good the Roland yeah. cloud units in there is it does just sound the same to me yeah um and and the, of all the boutiques i've tried the sh101 is so brilliant it is bang on the original i, I could happily sell my sh101 if it wasn't the very first synth i'd ever bought and it's kind mm. of you know emotionally attached yeah, to yeah. me mm -hmm. um i could happily sell it and it's better because it's polyphonic or, or paraphonic whatever the word would be you know you can play more than one note at a time and you can yeah. store presets and stuff they they got that one astonishingly well but um yeah. it's good if you you know it's they're, they're not outrageously expensive um i think they've kind of gone up they, 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 they shouldn't really be limited editions. They've obviously stopped, I think, the JPO8s. But aren't yeah, so they've stopped available. a whole bunch of them, haven't they? Um, the and there's clearly a demand for them. But no, if you if you want 
if you got fat fingers, or they're, they're not really designed to be programmed on. But you could get any MIDI controller or any kind of on-screen touch OSC style thing or, mm. or, or, or Lima or whatever it is and, and just do them from there. And they make a great sound and they don't use up any processing power. So I'm a, yeah. I'm personally, I'm a fan. But yeah. it's funny that this week I was just thinking, do you know what? I'd, yeah, it's a bit of space <laughs> there and a bit of bit of cash tied up in them. Maybe yeah. I'll, I'll invest in something else that mm. could sit there. Indeed. Because the other one uh, is the Jack. So, right, so let, let's bring this up Oh, here. yeah. So I was quickly going to say that out, yeah. of all, out of all the Jupiters, that's my least favourite. Right. Um, it's I have one. And it's very underwhelming compared to all the others. It's really strange. Um, mm -hmm. I prefer the JX3P over that. Okay. Um, my three Ps have both. I've got two, and they've both had Kiwi upgrades. So Kiwi upgrades is where you yeah, can yeah. replace the board, and it gives it touch sensitivity. I have the same on the eight P as well, but it's it doesn't interest me. It's it's yeah. It's like. Mm just sounds a bit banal compared to everything else yeah but yeah I, it's, I it has its that, fans yeah. but it's just you know when you've yeah. got them all in a big rack it's the one i use least i think yeah but boutique wise obviously it's nice warm pads and all the rest of it just yeah. not you know doesn't yeah. grab you by the testicles really indeed yeah. indeed so and um, we come to mike uh, and then mike's got some opinions on this so tell us mike what do you think of these new boutique synths well, um, I'd like to share a story. Um, mm -hmm. Many years ago, uh, I guess it would have been 2000, um, 2005, 2006, uh, I was at an AM show. And um, R Roland was in the habit at that time of throwing these big parties the night before NAM began. It was one of these just pull out all the stops, invite the press, invite the dealer reps, put out food and drink and just have fun. And I was at one of these and I had the rare and very, very precious opportunity to talk to uh, Ikutaro uh, Kakahashi, mm -hmm. the, the founder of Roland. And um, he is a very, very gracious man. Uh, his English is, is quite good and he has a very dry sense of humor. And uh, we chatted a little bit. Um, and finally, I just I couldn't resist. I had to ask. I said, I said. Uh, Mr. K, people are asking all the time for the Roland Classics. They want a Jupiter 8. They want an 808. They want a whatever. Um, have you ever thought about, about doing that? And he didn't even stop to, to think about the answer. It was obvious that he got a asked this all the time. And he had, <laughs> he had, a, he had a stock answer ready yeah. to go. He said, well... Um, we created the Jupiter 8 in 1981, and we created the Jupiter 8. Um, it's done. It's over. We're, we're you know, I, I have no interest in chasing ghosts, I think was the word that he used. Um, and my feeling on this uh, following on is if you think about all the people who are interested in these ancient synthesizers, there are really two groups. There's this very tight, small spike of the Poindexters out there who really want the originals. And then you've got this enormous bell curve of everybody who respects the sound, respects the history and the legacy, and doesn't really have an interest in absolute 100% authenticity. Now, let me tell you something. There is no benefit to any company that tries to do a 100% accurate uh, reproduction of any piece of vintage gear because there's going to be a significant percentage, maybe a majority of all the people who want it who are going to say that it doesn't sound like the original yeah. no matter what you do. Yeah. When I was at recording, we reviewed uh, the, Pol the famous Poltec EQs uh, there's a gentleman here in Colorado named Steve Jackson who brought them back. He had he talked to the original developers. He had the same parts. He had the same um, metal work. He arranged the, the the parts. You know, it was all hand soldered, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But he changed the outputs, not not the, the the circuitry, but the jacks. He changed the jacks so you don't have to wire in uh, bare wires on a terminal in the back. And everybody said that it ruined the sound. Yeah. So, uh, you know, if, if they're going to do something like, I'm, I'm not, I don't remember exactly 
but I believe <clears throat> that the Jupiter 8 had a flying mains lead. If they take that off of a reissue and put on an IEC plug, there will be people who claim that it doesn't <laughs> sound like the original. So there's there's just no benefit. Yeah. The one thing that Roland did, and when they announced the boutiques, there was this huge, you know, arg. What are they doing? What are they What are they doing? They're creating very nice modeled synthesizers that, in a mix, sound just fine. And they're in a nice small form factor. They add USB. And I have to say, um, the main reason why I don't have a pile of them is because uh, they they're, they're reproducing a lot of them, but I tend to focus on the ones that have a particular interest for me. Right here, just out of camera, I have a JX-03 because uh, I adored the JX-3P back in the day. Uh, but there's no way I'm going to pay used prices for one now. And this thing's phenomenal. Yeah. Um, I, I, I thought about owning a, a, an SH-01A because I had a 101 and I only recently sold my 202 and I miss it a little bit. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to go there. Um, I worked in a band for a long time with somebody whose main uh, synthesizer uh, was uh, uh, JX-8P. Mm -hmm. Didn't like it then. Don't like it now. Um, the main problem I have is if you use any of the front panel presets, you instantly sound like Tangerine Dream around 1986. Um, and, um, you know, so, so there's, there's sort of nothing there, but the JD 800, I have a real soft spot for mm. And when that one comes out, I'm probably going to get it. Even if it's tiny faders, because I have fairly small hands and those sorts of things don't bother me very much. Um, it's just so great to have that sound without the red goo. Uh, my friend <laughs> Houston, my friend Houston Singletary, who some people might know, he's a clinician, product demonstrator, uh, creates patches for all these people. Uh, one day we got to talking on a video chat, a Zoom call about the 800, and he says, I've got to show you my 800. And he goes out of the studio and he comes back and he's holding a JD 800 that has had the keyboard chopped off. Yeah. And he's put it in a case that sits at an angle above another <laughs> keyboard. And it's yeah. like, I got all the good stuff and I don't have the bad. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they're fragile. They don't, yeah. they don't last very well. And I, like the, I just like the idea of having these available in a small and relatively sturdy format. So yeah, that's absolutely. my take. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, I, I don't want to take anything away. I mean, I had a bad experience with the JP08 because I got sent one to review and I was super excited and then opened it up and found out it was four voices. And I just felt cheated. I felt that you can't sell something as a boutique version of this classic synthesizer. And it only has half the voices. Plus the fact that, you know, the, I didn't like the interface too much. I could have lived with it. Um, didn't like the USB hum uh, because it's got ground loops because it was, you know, if you're powering it over USB. Um, it just introduces that. So there's lots of little things, and I just I didn't gel with it, and I thought it was a little bit cheeky, especially in the, the manual at the time said for the full, or something, words along, I'm paraphrasing here, words to the effect of if you want the full Jupiter 8 effect, go out and buy another one, um, which, you know, not everyone can do. And I just thought that was a little bit, you know, if you're going to do it, do it properly. Now, I understand mm. that the limitation of the technology uh, that they used in these limited to four voices because it was still four voices in the the Juno uh, boutiques as well, which you know maybe not so big a deal, but you know even so. But nice to see that the JX08 has up to twenty note polyphony depending on the patches used, and the uh, the JD800 is one hundred and twenty eight, which again is dependent on patches and and use of the uh, the layers. So you get like thirty two if you use all four. So yeah. good to see that there's well considering the original you only considering the original you only got six. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> you know, yeah, absolutely. And so, I just think they've they've certainly taken on board some of the complaints about voice counts and things like that. And um, nice to see. I, I do think that they're going to be very popular, especially with the increased voice counts, because that mm -hmm. does concern probably the greatest amount of people. Yeah, I think for a, a smaller amount of people, 
that are, are more concerned about the tone of it. This can be a little bit concerning for, for us that are really about the ACB, DCB stuff, because that stuff really sounds good. And that's the only stuff that I'm going to buy that I would consider as using a replacement for my, you know, real vintage Roland. And um, to see them come out with now stuff that's their ABM tech mall, technology, which is their behavior modeling. It's not yeah, as accurate so as the component modeling. And, and again, for most people, this is not an issue. And I, and I see why they're doing this. And I think that like, again, for, for the company, this is a good decision, but for those of us that really were enjoying, since we can't get the original analogs remade by them, the ACB stuff has been like, this is, this is good. This is really a solid, and there's still some niggles that we've had like about the system eight, um, you know, no aftertouch and things like that. But when we we see what was an ACB domain, uh, you know, like at least we'll get, you know, if, if this had, when this came out with the uh, GX08, uh, you know, think about the GX8P, like, great, that's one of them that have been most requested for the ACB stuff along mm. with um, like the Jupiter 6, Jupiter 4, and of course now they've already done the, the JD800. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, what does the future hold for us that have been looking forward to these type of ACB, DCB products? Uh, at least when they came out with something like the Juno 60 in the boutique form, we're like, well, probably on the horizon, there's some more ACB coming. And sure enough, there was. Now that it's ABM, Zincor stuff, it's like, ah, what, what yeah. are we going to get next? Are we going to get something? We're a little bit nervous. Yeah, quite. I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to the fact that now that there's a JX08, there must be a JX8P cloud version coming at some point, whether that'll be um, ACB or ABM or whatever it is that the, the, the three-letter acronym is this week. Um, I'm surprised, as you pointed out, Dominic, uh, you know, the JD990 is like the enhanced version so why not just go that little extra step and do, you know, one of those? And similarly with the JX, you know, with why don't why not just go with the, the JX10? Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, it's, they're less well known, aren't they? I yeah. Think, you know, if you say JD990, some people go, oh yeah, that's that's one of them. Oh yeah, that was know, the like that was that was, that was you know. yeah, that was the JV1080 with the bigger screen. Yeah, yeah they do quite. don't realize quite how deep that thing goes. I yeah. like the comment about the why not do a J Jupiter Four. I mean, again, in theory, not so many people would buy it. In fact, the, to me, the Jupiter Four is nicer than the Jupiter Eight. Give me the choice. Yeah. I definitely have a four. Um, yeah. You know, it's 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 what sells initially, isn't it? And it's it's yeah. it's, well, a, it's yeah. a mass and market it's, thing, and it's and, a sell on thing. They can they can yeah. now add nine ninety functionality, and look, it's a yeah. bonus. You know, yeah. yeah well, I, I mean, from where I come from, if you're if you're looking at the music, if you're looking at the people who are doing this stuff, um, I, I, I there are a lot of folks who talk about authenticity and stuff like that when they're just um i love that comment the ken core engine with that it's song <laughs> because everybody needs that it's song that's what you should um, put on the side of the anaglyph kent if you're watching the yeah. kent <laughs> core engine added, now with added spong yeah um, but, but i guess the point i'm making is that um the people who are looking at the gear for the gear are never going to be happy with this mm. stuff yeah. the, the the fact is if you use it in a mix if you've got it nicely blended in an arrangement, mm -hmm. it sounds really, really good. Yeah. And I'm always a little annoyed by people who somehow decide that for whatever reason, sound isn't a cry, you know, usability isn't a cry, isn't a, uh, um, you know, sort of a, a, a criterion here, let alone mm -hmm. the most important one. It's like Stan from Monty Python's life of brian oh usability shut up <laughs> um you, you know i just i really feel i really feel that they're doing the right thing here um i've always admired the boxes the reason i don't have more is because they're not really emulating synths that i want mm. but i love the jx03 and yeah. um i i just i adore it bank b uh preset nine filter flow just <laughs> yeah baby yeah, I, I, look, I think Roland have come in for a lot of stick, and and we've you know we've we've given them a bit of stick um, over the you know almost two years that we've been doing this, but you know they they are satisfying a lot of people's wants and desires. I I'm I love the cloud. I think the Roland cloud. Yeah. I think I get good value 
others will disagree. I know, uh, for example, Kent doesn't like renting software. I get that. I totally get that. I, I avoided it for a, the first couple of years because of that. And then when the offering just got so good in terms of value for money, and I knew I'd get use out of it. It then became a valuable thing to me. Um, and so I, I have it and um, I will continue to have it. Um, however, if they do bring a boutique of something I really want, I might might consider it, especially if it's, of, you know, this. I'm not too, I, I'm not really in, in the weeds in terms of um, preferring the A, C, B and the, Whatever ABM, the other one is, ABM, ABM and yeah. and you know yeah. uh, ICBM and yeah, and, uh, <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm going to say the wrong thing. Yeah. I've been and... this week. I've been dealing a lot with um, um, ADA compliancy, which is uh, making sure that all of our content at work is is um, suitable for people with disabilities. And so I've been do, been lots of calls talking about ADA, and I keep having to stop myself from saying that when I'm talking about these things. Um, but there you go. So Roland have introduced the JX8P and sorry, the the JX08, <laughs> which is a JX8P, and the JD08, which is a JD800. They've introduced them in the boutique form. They are available soon, if not now, for 399 of your US dollars. I'm assuming that's going to be about the same in UK, maybe three four nine. I do know that. Uh, it's a fairly decent conversion rate, so uh, it might be a little bit cheaper, but still, 350 400 uh, whatever. Um, let's move on to another piece of hardware that um, kind of came out of nowhere. Certainly for, for me, I, I had not seen any inkling of this, and it seems very, very, very interesting. This is a company called Future Retro. Nice to see them again. They've been, yeah. they've been off the radar for years, and most folks thought that they'd gone away. Yeah, so they've um, they're certainly not new to the game, and this is the new Vector, sorry, Vectra synthesizer. I, I know Dom will probably agree with me that you have all the name that Vectra brings into your head is a really crappy Vauxhall company car, <laughs> um, which was horrible. I drove one for a few years when I worked at British Telecom, and um, they're awful things. But this. Quite the contrary, it's a lovely, lovely looking thing with these lovely four vector joysticks in there. Uh, this nice capacitive keyboard seems quite small. I couldn't quite get, it's probably about maybe a foot and a half wide, roughly sort of thing. Um, looks very nice and sounds amazing. Um, whilst I uh, go and look for a video demo for you to, for you to play, um, I know that you, Mike, are a bit like me. You're a fan of uh, vector synthesis in the form of the y Yamaha SY22 and 35 and the TG33. So maybe you want to uh, have a go at this one first. Um, sorry, I'm just asking. Kent, Kent <laughs> wants to know if, if he should take a drink every time somebody mentions his name. And I yeah. just, you know, well, I, I, thought he, I thought he was already smashed. Um, <laughs> two, well, two drinks if they call him Ken and not Kent. Kent yes. Um, because it yeah. doesn't drink, it'd just be like on sugar rush, I would imagine, by the time he drinks all of that stuff. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, um, you know, uh, I'm well known that one of my one of my big things that, that I look for in, uh, first of all, synthesizer user interface is the hill that I die on. That is my that is my thing. How people connect to these machines, and um, left hand controllers are a particular uh, uh, soft spot of mine. So, <clears throat> you know, when the um, when something with four joysticks comes out, I kind of mm, a little <laughs> in my pants uh, <laughs> um, because I'm a really big believer in that kind of immediate control. And um, I might pick up one of these things just to see how they're making use of it. I've heard some of the YouTube videos. It sounds pretty remarkable. Yeah. And um, just the various ways that they're putting those joysticks to use. I mean, the only thing that worries me is, you know, putting it in a gig bag and taking it out and having all the joysticks broken. Yeah. Uh, I really, I really wish that somebody other than techniques would do that trick with, you know, it's not actually a joystick. It's a sphere with a dimple on the end that you mm -hmm. can move around like the SY35, yeah. the SY22. Yeah where you know it doesn't break off and you know i'm i'm a big believer that if that you do, there are parts of you that you don't want to break off yeah and uh but but i i think it's a fascinating i think it's a fascinating uh new development i'm glad to see future retro still out there and kicking 
and I'm looking forward to playing it. Yeah, let's have a listen to it. Uh, I managed to find a clip on YouTube. It's, a, it's a, like a 50-minute long demonstration, but this will hopefully give people an idea if they haven't heard this already. So um, it, it looks like, unlike other kind of vector synthesizers, um, where, like, for example, on the, the SY22 and 35, um, you literally just, your, 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 your joystick is um, moving the it's volume. Mixing, but, it's yes. mixing waveforms. It's, and, yeah, and, 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 it's the same on the wave stations in the Prophet VS. Yeah, exactly. So it's not, uh, it, it, whereas this seems to be, obviously there's four joysticks, it, it's, they're going to be, messing around with a lot more but i always think that you know that kind of whole joystick control or even just like an xy pad control really kind of opens things up in terms of expressivity and to have four of these damn things it's almost like playing those uh what was that video game we had the forward and back joysticks um there was tank was it tank command was one and then there was a sega one wasn't it with the robots um virtual on that's it and you have these big joysticks and you can just see them moving around like this it looks and sounds really cool it 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 sounded very familiar, but I was trying to put my finger on what it sounded like because it's it is a digital analog hybrid. Um, let's go through the specs here. Um, uh, where are we? Uh, digital waveforms uh, two uh, per oscillator, two waveforms per oscillator, five hundred waveforms in total. Um, loads of modulation sources, loads of LFOs, and just lots and lots of things going on there. Um, analog filters, analog amplifiers. Um, yeah, it just looks a stunning uh, piece of, of gear. Dom, thoughts? Yeah. Well, it, I, hard to judge on a YouTube video. It's a brashness quality yes. to it, almost like a like a brute, you know, Matrix brute or something. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's got that harshness which can cut through a mix. Um, it has a a competitor. The, the oh, Vectra. you've got one of those. Oh, yeah. The Vectra. No, I've had a play no, with versus one of them. the Vectra, which is also four, four synths, one a sort of one in each corner, and and you can basically mix between them. But you can mix the filters and stuff. But rather than having a joystick, you set up a, a kind of orbiting uh, thing. It's it looks like really. It's not plugged in. Otherwise, I'd show you really cool graphics and stuff. But that the principle I think is fairly similar. The price is probably fairly similar too. So it's yeah. quite interesting. This, this is eleven hundred. Yeah. I think possibly the Vectra tra is more of a performance in instrument and yeah. the vector is a little bit more of a uh well it does droning i'm not saying mm -hmm. it's all it does is drone but it, <laughs> you can set up really long effective kind of things it's more of an um, exploratory thing do you know what i mean one's a keyboard and one's a module if, if, if that's um, the yeah. best way of putting it can, um, I, can i jump in for just one second of course wilderness, wilderness music in the chat says we only have two hands how do we use all four joysticks one joystick with a foot switch would be better uh in my opinion no it wouldn't the idea is you want to have all of these controls mapped so that you can simply grab the ones you want without having to mess around. You never, ever want a two-stage process for something you're trying to do in real time. Um, the shift button is evil, and <laughs> you, you don't want to have to switch modes when you're in the heat of a solo. So uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big believer in multiple joysticks. Uh, Axel Hartman was the same way with the Neuron. Put a joystick yeah, yeah. on everything because you never know when you're going to want to reach for it. Yeah, so absolutely. that's that's my thought. Yeah. Also, yeah, and 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 the vector, by the way, uh, 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 Dominic is a very cool box. Um, Chris Meyer, I don't know if he's in the chat right now. He is. He's, yeah, he is. Yeah. Um, you know, he was he was the fellow who actually came up with the concept of vector mixing. Mm -hmm. And um, he has a vector right now, and he is getting just amazing stuff out of it. He's been trying to talk me into buying one, 
But mm. um, it's just it's interesting. But I think something like the Vectra would sit better with me just because of the hands on um, aspect of it. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? I mean, they are, they're very different, different beasts, but one is very performant, I think. Um, yeah, no, I love it. I'm in the middle of making a video about it, so it's, and it is, it is amazing, but I don't want to take anything away um, from, from the Vectra, which is clearly a different beast. It's just the commonality of having the four corners and the four, it's, it's four based, you know, which is, which is interesting and, and the ability to mix between everything like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it sounds great. It's, it's interesting, isn't it? That I've always associated that brashness of sound with, with uh, um, the kind of Oberheim brashiness, if you like, compared to, say, the, the original Prophet 5s and Roland's slightly more warm, or certainly with the Prophet, the, the slightly warmer oscillator thing. That's how I've always... I've always thought of it in that way. You know, you're over home to the big da da noises and you get in simple yeah. minds. Yeah. And the prophets are the kind of wop, 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 wop you get in Japan songs and stuff, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, and it's, by, it sounds a bit like that. By the, by the way, uh, someone pointed out in chat, um, the thing has no onboard, onboard effects. All of that echo and reverb you were hearing was it being put through external devices. Right. Yeah, oh, that's interesting as well. So, so you know, if you if you can't hide your demo sounds with onboard effects, hide them with <laughs> external effects. Yeah, Chris, have you got any got any thoughts on this one? Yeah, so I've been kind of back and forth on this. Um, I first saw it uh, from one of uh, we have Eric in the the chat and one of his uh, posts on I think Instagram. And I, I saw it and thought, well, this is a really interesting looking thing. Obviously, the four jo joysticks and the capacitor keyboard is something that uh, immediately draws your attention. And then I thought about for a moment, like, ah, maybe this is something that's a little more gimmicky or maybe something I wouldn't be interested in. And uh, thankfully, to his credit, he kept posting videos about it and I kept watching them. And then I found that hour long one, that whatever, 54 minute video yeah. sound demo and so i stuck it on one day it uh, just to listen to it while i was you know doing work around the house and i really like the sound of it um especially the first part of that demo as um he's playing some notes like the first couple times he grabs the joysticks there like the one to the right like starts manipulating the sound i like the tonality of it uh, it is a uh, basically a, a, i guess it can run in two modes like it's a mono synth but you can also do four voice paraphonic and there's mm -hmm. a lot of similarities i'm already thinking of like the similarities between this and the um little micro freak obviously a much different mm -hmm. price category and the the type of things that this can do with these sticks are you know put it much above a uh a, a micro freak and i'm not crazy about the keyboard but again the sound is there and the way that you can manipulate it it seems you know um with some of eric's uh videos uh it's shown how it works a little bit. I mean, just in some real brief detail. And I, I, I'm finding that it's, that's really interesting. And so again, going back and forth, I'm like, okay, oh, <laughs> what are they going to want for this thing? Is it going to be like three grand or something? And then, then I'm like, I'm just out. I'm like, I'm not going to be interested in it. So I went and looked it up and then, and they're like, well, it's $1,100 for, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, you know, 550 half down for the pre-order. And then yeah. when they come out and I can't remember when it's coming out, but it started to get me thinking about it. I mean, I, st I got it. I, f I feel like I, I really want to get that Hydrosynth Deluxe first, but maybe for something after that, this is mm. quite fascinating. Again, for the sound, and, you know, somebody mentioned, I think maybe Chris Mayer in the um, uh, chat mentioned drones and, like, something where you have um, complete control over the sound as you're playing it. Uh, as Mike mentioned with solos, being able to manipulate the sound as you go and play, that's, I, I, I'm, I'm very attracted to that. So my, yeah. my overall outlook on this is very positive. I'd like to see more about it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I just cool. think it's great that we, we're seeing um, more of these smaller manufacturers coming to the fore, bringing some really cool ideas. Mm -hmm. I think... Um, I've often said that you know everything goes in cycles. It's not just me that says that, but in terms of synthesis, we've we had the analog revival. Then now we're having you know this kind of digital revival, and it kind of kicked off a lot with FM. And now we're seeing vector synthesis, which came kind of in the wake of FM uh, with you know the Prophet VS, and then of course uh, the SYs from Yamaha, and then the Wave Station. So vector synthesis so that must mean that physical modeling is going to get a nice big kick up the ass um in a, in a couple of years time i'm looking forward to that who knows 
But Wait, um, uh, just okay. hang on a minute. I've got five fifty dollars written here. Is that not uh, that's the, the that's down payment? That's the 50, down payment. Yeah, fifty yeah, percent uh, down payment. It's eleven hundred dollars. So it's way yes. more than the vector. Yes. That's a shock, actually. Okay. Well, more that's parts. A lot of money. One of, the that, things, one of the things that that people tend to forget is. Th- there are certain things when you build hardware that are going to jack the price and like good um, quality, joysticks, yeah. like joysticks, like good quality knobs and encoders that aren't going to flake out on you, like mm-hmm. you know properly designed SMDs, like strain relief on your jacks. Yeah. Um. You know these little things they add up. Yeah. And and well, the yeah, fact, there's and the there's only eight that, knobs though, and there's four. I mean joysticks are expensive. Joysticks I, I'm surprised. Expensive. I'm, I am surprised that, uh, you know, the keys are like that but yeah it's, it's okay if the, the joysticks cost a lot I'm, I, that's a bit of a shock because that, that puts it up into the next bracket well it for does for me it um, does yeah but yeah okay it sounds good though yeah absolutely so, and um yeah Go ahead. Here, here's a little bit of news so uh eric has mentioned that he can get a hold of jared so if we want to have him on the show in the future and if if everybody's interested we could get him on and really Book check him, this Dana. thing out Book yeah. him. get him get him booked <laughs> we want these uh, people eric, Eric, I'll be in contact with you, and yep. we'll get that worked out. Yeah, we're, we're booking 2022 already, and um, he would be great to have on, absolutely. Hey, one final <coughs> uh, or just one little thing to tuck in there. What I was thinking about, so, cause, so Mike was talking about how do you carry this around and go places because you're worried about the joysticks, and I imagine what will probably, probably happen if, if there's enough – uh, need for it is there's that company and I can't remember the name of the company. I'm sure somebody in Dexaver. the chat knows. Dexaver. Yeah, Deck Saver. Yes, Deck Saver. Yes. So they have that plastic glass lid that goes to cover your synthesizers. But something like that to me would be what you'd want if you were taking it out. Yeah, no, absolutely. There's always a good market for um, third party uh, cases and stuff. Or even, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, like uh, companies like um, Sonicware who actually do limited runs for people that pre order of cases that are, are perfectly formed to fit their uh, instruments in. So, yeah, absolutely. Somebody will come up with something because those things will, will break event. You know, they're crashed around live but i do like you know that this i had to go with one of those vectors that you've got there dom um i went around to see uh, our friend simon alexander a little while back and he kind of led me into his studio as he often does and he said he said close your eyes as he often does and he says sit down as he often does and um, i didn't yeah i didn't get the the surprise i was expecting but he said open your eyes and there was this big you know this this blue, big blue box with all this wonderful you know stuff bouncing around on there and it is it's a very inspiring instrument and i you know, mm. like that a lot but then we're seeing as i say we're seeing vector stuff coming back into fashion again uh kodomo's essence fm has now got a morphing vector touchscreen where mm. you can either do it manually or assign it to an lfo in both axes and so you can do lots of wonderful things and people are rediscovering the joys of wiggling a joystick again which is uh, yeah, always a I good mean, thing it's, the, the, the vectors actually d- d- sort of does everything different it's almost, uh, it puts a spin on everything it's like hey. the oscillators yeah. are kind of strangely put together they have yeah. weird uh, kind of over uh, harmonics and, so, and they're great it's just you have to think slightly differently and then the way you mix it all together is kind of weird but then it makes a lot of sense and it's quite a, a leap to get your head around how it works which is why I've had it here for a little while and uh, I'm still kind of only halfway through the video on it because it's so deep yeah um, but it's yeah it's refreshingly different you know and it, yeah, in, in, a, in a really nice way which is good and anything that gives more control in a vector way like that joysticks you know, yeah okay maybe they break and stuff it's like honestly they, they are so much more conducive to making stuff change well, over time which is the key yeah. to making you know yeah music i in in the mid 90s actually uh my main performance uh, uh instrument for a while was <clears throat> it was an SY35 controlling a wave station AD and a Prophet VS rack. Oh wow. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. And That's it was joysticks it, for the Max. <laughs> it was it was one of those things where you you know you you press down firmly on middle C grab the joystick and half an hour later the wife comes in and says will you stop <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah we know that i think that's a fairly common uh common reaction anyway um that is future retros uh vectra synthesizer available now to pre-order um the full price just to make this clear is eleven hundred dollars you have to put a 550 dollar down payment down to pre-order 
and they do stress that the deposit is non-refundable so make sure you really do want it because you won't get that stuff back um and then they are looking to ship in spring of 2022 which will be interesting now uh that's just a little uh quick snippet of hardware news it's not really news so much but i do just love this instrument i remember um seeing um tom and simon lug this into the hall at synth fest in 20 when was it 2019 i think pre-pandemic and um it just like everyone just flocked around the analog solution stand because colossus was was just like everything uh, it was tom's homage to uh you know the the, the synthy 100 um and yeah it's just a stunning machine which is now available in black and that's can the I, only bit of news can i just it's, say something here very quickly of course what the actual effing f <laughs> really i mean seriously look at this damn thing all right okay sorry i'm done yeah, it is. I mean, an, it, I mean, it's just a, it's a breathtaking piece of of of, uh, of furniture, uh, of of instrumentation, of creativity. I spoke to Tom and said, "What the hell? Literally, yeah, what the hell are you thinking? How much is this going to cost?" Which we'll come on to in just a second. You can probably see the deposit price there. How much is it going to cost? How many do you plan on making? And how the fuck are you going to ship this around the world or fit it into studios? And he said, "Aha." He said, I've actually made this so that it will fit through a regular English door frame. And we all know that they're quite narrow, compared, especially compared to the American ones. I've seen him and Simon. Uh, oh, and by the way, if Simon Forsyth is watching, get well soon, mate, because he busted his wrist the other day quite mm. badly. Oh, no. So um, all the best to you, Simon. But I have seen him, and, and he's a big lad, big strapping lad. So is Tom, lifting these up narrow, twisty stairs and through into little attic-based studios. But they go, and they, um, they sound and look incredible. Tom said it was a folly. He it, it was his folly. He always wanted to do something like this. He wasn't sure if he was going to make it was going to make or break him. Uh, I don't know if it's made him, but it certainly hasn't broken him unless he tells me otherwise. They are just incredible machines, and of course they are now available in what I think is sexy as hell. I do like this a lot. There's something about black metal and dark wood that just does something for me, and, I mean... and it's just. Gorgeous. How much more black can it get? It quite none, more black. None, yeah. none more. None more, none more. more black. No. It's it's like sexist. Death. Sexist. Yes. Um, it is around twenty thousand of your British pounds in full price. So if you want one, uh, and that's XVAT by the way, and yeah. delivery, that all comes on top. But if you want one, you have to put a seven grand deposit. And Tom builds these himself in his backyard. What's um, the full price again? Sorry. Yeah, about twenty thousand. Twenty. Oh, and, they, they and, are wonderful, though, aren't they? Crikey. Yeah. And Kent, no, they are not as big as the anaglyph. <laughs> yeah, the anaglyph will. will this, this, th these are new entries on the uh, synth top trump. So, Dave, if you're watching, you need a new edition. Uh, yeah, Colossus uh, is now available in black, and it's just uh, that's the white version, which is still as pretty as hell. Um, but it's great, and you mm. can configure these. I just thought that he was just going to do this one kind of design, but you can have all sorts going on here, um, and all, you can specify. You can actually get quite customised in this. I think Christian Henson has got one, and he kind of he went does. like, yeah, he went all out, and he's pretty much kind of maxed his to the hilt. Um, but there you go; it's available if, now if you are in the market for one. Now, if you can imagine, you could buy both a black and white one, put them back to back, and on that panel, you you could invite a friend over and play Battleship together. The most expensive <laughs> game of Battleships ever. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and you'd have your own soundtrack as well, so it'd be fantastic. Wow! Yeah. You sunk my pulse width mod. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, joke of the joke of the week goes to Mike. Um, so there you go. Uh, Colossus is, is now available in black. Um, Tom, you just you're amazing. I mean, the guy is bonkers, in a nice oh, way. He's absolutely it's, bonkers. It's and insane. We love him absolutely. It's insane. And I always I, say every time we mention analog solutions, I will always mention this because it's still one of the, the greatest things on the internet. Yep. Tom, like myself, is a big Pet Shop Boys fan, and Tom recreated their old grey whistle test appearance. It's very specific, and he went out and bought every single piece of gear that they used on that performance and and had it shipped in so he had um two fairlights with the friendship synchronizer 
uh, an emulator 2, a DX7, a DX1, and a Technics PX1 Plus. He even went out and bought half or about a dozen uh, monitors to go behind the screen, just as they had on the TV show. And he bought all of that to just do that video. And then he sold most of that stuff off. I think he might have only just sold the PX1. <laughs> the, Crazy uh, man. No, I, I love the analog solutions French connection. Anything, yes. anything that adds more nuance, I, that's just, oh, yeah. that's my thing. Anything that adds more nuance to playing is, yeah. I'm, I'm on it. And if you if you are a fan of the French Connection, um, I, here's a quick plug. Um, podcast came out a few weeks ago where I interviewed Ian Boddy, who is a big proponent of um, <clears throat> that French Connection uh, version of the Andes Martino, I think, isn't it? Yep, um, yep. And so, yeah, me. he's a big user of that. A great, really, really interesting guy. So um, there you go. Quick plug for Sand on Sand Podcasts with Ian Boddy. Um, he's brilliant. Yeah, definitely worth checking that oh, out. Because, yeah. I mean, he was designing Akai sounds way back in the day. Oh, gosh, yeah. Well, know, I mean, he was, yeah. He was like, um, oh, there's this kind of weird, amazingly brilliantly talented guy who makes sounds with these kind of weird machines you know yeah. back then let alone and he just hasn't stopped he's just his got libraries better better. are superb aren't they it's incredible i remember the ads for his very first cassette the climb yeah wow that's yeah. he and i go way way back we're not close friends but i like to chat with him every you know when i get a chance mm. which really isn't very often and uh you know i wish i knew him better yeah uh, but the stuff that he was actually repping a kai <clears throat> when I met him for the first time and you know we chatted and and I've got a lot of ad admiration for the stuff that he's doing right yeah. now if you ever uh, if you're in the UK once hopefully once Synthfest gets back into a physical version um next year uh, Ian is almost like you know one of the first people they book and he'll bring some really cool gear and I think the 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 last time I saw him there he had the French connection it was just yeah, you, know, you just walk up to him and say, "Would you like to hear this?" Like, and he would just play it, and it was fantastic, and it's really, really cool. So there you go. Um, Analog Solutions Colossus available in black. Um, I want to get this one in because um, Mike uh, Metley is also a very keen iOS instrument user, and this was a very interesting addition to um, the world of iOS instruments. I kind of dabbled for a while. At, there you go. He's giving us a demonstration. Um, I got into iOS very early on, but found that just the hardware quite wasn't quite there yet. But this is a new um, uh, instrument uh, from Fingerlab, uh, the uh, appropriately named uh, company. They've also got a bunch of other things. They also produce all of these um, as Mac applications. And they're not these ones that rely on M1 compatibility. These will run on an older Mac and also on regular iOS. So there's no need for this kind of M1 stuff. But let's just have a little listen to this. Uh, it's really cool. So there you go, that's Fingerlab, or Polywave from Fingerlab, and they've also got a whole bunch of other instruments, and they are all free to download with in-app purchases. So you can just get in there and get a feel for these things, and if you really like it, it's not hugely expensive to then uh, unlock all of the features. And as I said, you can download these on iOS, and you can also download these on macOS, and it's not one that's tied into to M1. So um, let's go to our resident uh, iOS instrument user, and and let us know what you think about this. Well, um, I've been playing with it for a while. And it's an interesting way to work, I'll have to say. Yeah. Um, I'm not entirely sure about this one. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a, 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 a sort of a, a, a weird fan of, of Finger Lab. I, I like what they're doing. I believe in them. But when I buy their apps, it's almost like a charitable contribution. Uh, you know, I'm right. I, you, you get the free app, which, by the way, removes most of the features um, and has basically no presets. Yeah. So the, the pro version really. But they're not expensive. And these guys are at least trying. 
Um, I have Flinth and Minth, and uh, their their Casio SK uh, thing is is a blast. Uh, but uh, Polywave, I'm not really sure about. One of the things that people tend to think is going to be much cooler than it actually is is this whole business of drawing your own waveform yeah and you know and i've got news for you drawing your own waveform generally what you end up with uh if you don't have the patience to put it in point by point generally what you end up with is a, is kind of a bumpy sine wave um and uh you know uh i just i don't really see the appeal when people are providing wavetables that have so many interesting waveforms in them. This particular one, uh, I think that the, the presets are designed to sort of show off all of the fancy movement stuff it does. So there aren't many that don't make you seasick. Yeah. Uh, and um, I, I have to say it didn't really grab me the way a lot of other, other apps do. And it didn't grab me as much as Mint, which is just so much fun. Uh, but we'll have to see. Um, it's it's just a uh, you know it's an interesting thing, and it's I think it's five bucks. Yeah, it's not know? a lot of money. You know, all. to get it, I think the most expensive thing they have is eight. Yeah, and you know, so for for basically for about fifteen quid, you can have their entire collection. Yeah, and they and they are fun. You know, I wish they'd update DM one, but hey. Yeah, uh, Chris, you have an iPad. Do you use yeah. it much for instrumentation? Um, I haven't used it so much yet for, for instruments themselves. I do have some loaded on there. In fact, I've just been too busy to check this one out. I was curious though, and Mike, I don't know if you know, when you're drawing the waveforms, um, are you able to use the, uh, Apple pencil to do that? Cause it seems like it would be a little bit sloppy to do with your finger, but I haven't I used don't, the app. I don't know. Let's find out. Uh, <laughs> right. Live. By the way, while whilst Mike is doing that, I just want to say thank you too. Yes, yes, there we go. you can. Excellent. It works. It works beautifully. There we go. So you still uh, can't get anything creative out of it, but it but, does work. But it does work. Fantastic. Good to see. Um, I just want to say thank you first of all to Dina, um, uh, who's repping the Alan R. Perlman Foundation as she does Dina, so fantastically well. Love you. Yeah, we all love, love Dina. Uh, we'll have to get you back on the show again, Dina, because uh, everybody loved it when you came on last time. But thank you ever oh so my... much for your donation. Um, oh my God, Chris, this is this is actually kind of cool because <laughs> because you can tap the screen and it'll throw in these spikes and notches. This oh. is way more interesting than using your finger. There you there go. We go. So, yeah, there's an, maybe. There's another phrase we don't hear that often. Um, Eric Ribeiro, um <laughs> Thank you also for your five dollars. Much, much appreciated. And Andy, uh, over in the US, um, yeah, boutique right. is not a That's proper name. Cool. So this is referring to our previous topic here, um, but they're fun and portable. But listen, thank you for your donation. Um, really, really appreciated. Um, thank you to all of you. So um, let's move across to Dominic. Uh, are you an iOS instrument user? I keep dabbling. Mm. Um, I mean, it's almost ready for prime time, isn't it? I love I uh, love uh, watching uh, kind of YouTube demos of people using the the iPad music stuff, and I have played around with it as a using it as an extra instrument, or particularly as a controller, I guess. But um, it's not it's never quite done it yet for me. I've gone mm. on holiday and thought, oh, do you know what? I could take the deluge, or I could t you know take an iPad. I'll try it on the iPad, and I've written a few beats and things, but. Never really taken it that far. I think I just bought a, a new iPad for Lula May, um, and mm -hmm. I kind of want one. It's really nice. It's, it's I've got an old one, which is yeah. just about the point where it's not going to be supported, I think. And it's a lot faster, and it, I'm, I'm sure it can do a lot of funky stuff that mine can't do. It, it, if they could bring out logic for it... Um, then I think I'd be totally in there if I could just, you know, be yeah. mixing stuff. And I don't think that's far away, actually. I, I well, think it's going to happen, isn't it? I mean, you, you've got a pro got one, to. and you can you can not necessarily record it and use it as the main thing, but chuck stuff from this studio out onto that that I can just sit downstairs and fiddle around with. Mm -hmm. That would be awesome. And, and, and suddenly I think it would come to life with all the plugins. I think possibly the thing that's pushing me back is the fact that... Um, 
there isn't I, I'm not comfortable with Cubase running on it it just didn't really work for well, me well Cubasis and, Cubasis is a sort of a brain dead version of, of Cubase in a lot of ways the the really good DAWs the, the the really good linear recorders are designed for iOS they're not they're not ports of you know I, I mean everybody wishes that somebody would build a clip launcher like Ableton Live everybody wishes that but you know the 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 DAWs aside from GarageBand, the 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 DAWs that are ported. No, you want something like Aurea. Aurea Pro is a mm. really really nice DAW that's optimized for touch. And I agree with you, Dominic. That now that they're getting more powerful, I have to I have to explain. I've done entire albums on iOS. I've got I, my last CD was entirely done on iOS. And funnily enough, uh, it was selling really well until I mentioned that in an interview and then <laughs> nothing. But, um, uh, but, but yeah, it is, it's, it's not for everybody, but I, I like working that way. I've, I've actually got five iPads uh, uh, surrounding me right now that I use all the time. And I've, I've done entire one hour shows just on one iPad that's been set up properly. So yeah, get a new one. Yeah, I think I'm just missing the I'm missing the door. So I'll try out Aura. I mean, Aurea. I think that's that's Aurea. Okay, yeah. that's the that's the bit that hasn't spurred me on because I have to set up do, you know something now, else to make it work. I just need that familiarity yeah. really and the do, way of, and the way of working. Do research first. Aurea is not a cheap program. Uh, it would you wouldn't even bat an eyelash if it was a virtual instrument for a Mac. But on iOS, you look at this price tag and you just kind of go, really? What the hell? It's like $50. Oh, it's, that's okay. it's, it's, not a, it's not a cheap program, but God, it's amazing. It's, it's beautifully designed. And, okay. it's, and it's not new. It's been around for a while yeah. and it's been updated and kept working. So that's, that's just a plug for them because I love them. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people have wondered now that the iPad has, uh, or at least the Pro has USB-C, if they will at some point bring Logic over to it. Seems like yep. it's a little bit. Well, yeah, I think that's what I'm waiting for. And yeah. the Pro has an M1 processor. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, the, the so, convergence is happening. It's happening as we yeah. speak. It's a slow process, but it will finally, you know, we, we'll, it's just it's going to happen. And, and I would love to see um, Logic on an iPad. I mean, I, I when I, I bought um, the original, you know, iPad 1, as it wasn't called, but we call it now, because I was working for Peter Vogel doing the, the Fairlight app. And so I had to get one. And I Got was one right behind me, still. And I was, yeah, I was really, I wasn't, I, I just thought it was a, a, a very large iPhone and I didn't really kind of appreciate what it was actually doing. Got one, fell in love with it, but the problem is, you know, that first generation of the iPad was just not good enough to do the things that it was, you know, people were hoping it would. And I really invested in it thinking it would get there and it didn't and then they brought the second ipad out and then the third ipad and then things started i bought the ios dock which i can see one just to your left there mike is that at least it's ios dock behind uh this one is an yeah. io dock yes yeah, and yeah. i've got an i've got an ipad 2 in it and it only runs 32-bit uh apps that yeah, you yeah. can't use otherwise because i i would die if i didn't have alchemy mobile I, yeah, I still yeah, exactly, use it yeah. all the time. And this is basically my alchemy synth. Sure, yeah. But I, I went out and bought one of those IO docks and thought, yeah, this is a good investment. And then shortly after that, they dropped the 30-pin connector. <laughs> and oh, <laughs> I'm not getting another oh, one. Oh, but Alesis, Alesis was terrible with that. They released yeah. the IO dock then. Apple updated to the uh, iPad 2. They released the tray so the iPad 2 would fit. Then they released the iPad yes. 3, which was off by like a millimeter. Yeah. So you couldn't put it in the cradle and they were about to release the iPad three when they went to the lightning connector and it was just like, Oh, to hell with this. Yeah. So uh, how anybody <laughs> thought that was a good idea to, uh, to produce accessories for an iPad that could not be, you know, could not adapt to Apple's, uh, incessant changing, you know, uh, port policies and what have you. I've got a running machine and a cycling machine downstairs with thirty pins. I haven't been able to use it since they changed the. No, uh, the it connection. just renders whole things absolutely. I, just, useless. I cannot oh. run or cycle or anything. I've hopefully, no. this thing's gone to pot since they changed that so thirty. So funny pin. enough, I so I, I was telling Robbie I spent like twelve hours at my parents' house setting up all their technology stuff, and. Uh, 
and amongst other things and they had something they had so they had some little like portable uh uh you dock your phone onto it and it's got speakers whatever this oh, yeah, called yeah. but it had yeah, the 30 pin connector docks, yeah. Yeah. But surprising my parents who are, are you know, 100 years ago in technology, um, they had a little devi- uh, a connector that went on top there. So it converted yeah. the 30 pin to lightning yeah, yeah. and seemed to be able to give it a little bit more life. Now, of course, as phones get bigger, maybe you don't want to have your, <laughs> your, your you know, big ass uh, iPhone sitting on something that's just it, a little pin if it doesn't support it. Yeah, because it stands proud, doesn't it, by about an <laughs> yeah. inch or so. Yeah, and, up, yeah. I got it. Yeah. And I've got one of those adapters in my drawer along with pretty much every other adapter that was ever invented. Yeah. I've used these things for video demonstrations, you know, with projectors. And so, yeah, you've got the, you've got a dongle for VGA and you've got a dongle yeah. for HDMI and, and, and so on. Yeah. But, you know, it's really, it's really a, I love it. I love it as a platform. And mm-hmm. I, I actually, that's, that's another topic. Yeah, yeah. Now, so I still use this, which is um, I actually inherited this off my mother-in-law. This is uh, forget the iOS on it is uh, maxed out at nine, I think. So I don't know. This is a third. That that'll be a two. Or, that'll be a two or a three. Does it yeah. have a uh, Does it have a, uh, a thirty pin on it? Yeah, thirty pin. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be a two or a three. Two. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, to to be fair, it does what I want it to do, which isn't very much, and it isn't very often um basically it's got the fairlight app on there so when i go and do talks and we talk about you know using these then i at least i can do that because that app still for now supports it um but i don't i i don't know i don't i, I don't have any reason to to have an ipad and i'm an apple maniac but i i just don't see it. and my kids have it's, them my wife has them but yeah you know it's just you, you either it, you either click with it or you don't yeah. and then oh, no, no, I didn't go for the no, watch I either because I, I, I don't. I haven't worn a watch in over twenty years. Yep, I keep getting tempted, yep. but for exactly the same reason, I never wear a watch. I can tell yeah. the time without one pretty well. So I did think about well, it from a fitness perspective, but then just the thought of buying a watch just to help me lose weight just to. I got a bit bit. <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But there well, you go. I hadn't, so, I hadn't oh. worn a watch either for like 20 years, and I got this is like one of the older ones. Right. Mm-hmm. And I was kind of like, I'm not sure I really want to spend the money on this, but it, it was when they dropped prices and up the processor when like the version two came out or something. So I got the version mm. one with the better processor. Mm. But mm. The thing is like, it saves me so much hassle of going to my phone for most things like checking the time, checking the temperature, checking text messages. I just, uh, this is something I need to deal with. No, I don't. I just keep going. Yeah. That's tempting, so that's, that's it? the things for me. It's like, it, it's a time saver, but I don't use the apps on it or do anything fancy no. with it. That's, we did. At, at my place at, uh, where I work to, to, to uh, do my day job, we actually we have an app where you can unlock doors uh, with your Apple Watch or even your iPhone. Um, and it's all just you can do gesture control. So you can actually unlock a door by pretending to turn a key with your device. It's or fun, just, but yeah. it's it's an expensive habit to get into. It is. What yeah. I've been what I've been really waiting for is they've got a lot of the stuff that's important. Um, uh, fall sensors, for for mm-hmm. reasons I won't go into. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there are a uh, fall sensor is a really good thing. Um, being able to check your blood oxygen level, being able to to to, to uh, record an ECG. Yeah. Um, what I'm waiting for though is is one that'll that'll hold a charge for 25 hours. Yeah, because because right, now, mm-hmm. right now, the latest ones, you can charge them for five minutes and they'll track your sleep, but you've still got to take one. You've got to charge it before you go to bed and you've got to charge it when you wake up. And I'm right, just, yeah. I'm just yeah, not yeah. there yet. It's just yeah. not quite convenient yeah. enough. And I, I have no interest, I think, in playing a synthesizer on my watch. I think no. that's, probably, that's probably my limit. Yeah, um, step too far. For sure. For well, sure. I, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for them to, to give me the ability to talk to a, a black computerized Trans Am in my driveway, but I haven't got that yet. Yeah, it's coming. The one with the, with the one with moving it. LEDs. There you go. There mm-hmm. you go. No, I was going to say my friend got um, diagnosed with heart arrhythmia from his watch, and literally mm-hmm. it just popped up. Said, "Go check yourself out." And the guy said, "Yeah, yeah, it's really early." Yeah. Sorted, come well, in, you know, and he's fixed. And I was like, okay, that's the first example of a really useful. Yeah. When um, I got diagnosed with atrial fibrillation earlier this year, they somebody said, 
get an Apple Watch because mm. it will tell. I, I mean, I know when I'm having a, a flutter because I can feel the bloody thing. But this, you know, sometimes the, the small ones aren't so noticeable. You, you're not quite sure if you're having one or not. Mm. And so, you know, things like that would help. I do have a like a blood pressure monitor that can tell me all of those things. But you have to go and put it on and press yeah, the button. No, yeah. um, so having one of those and also for ECGs as well, because, you know, obviously having AF, that's that's a useful thing. So mm. I have thought about it, but it's just it's, it's an expensive little thing. And, um, you know, we'll see. The other story, very quickly, no, no, yeah, Sentience yeah. just mentioned it in the chat because I've been chatting to him about um, his work, which is using... Apple of Watch course. sensors yes. and other sensors, geo-based stuff to generate music. And it's worthwhile mentioning. I mean, there's this mm. great video he's got of uh, an Apple Watch hanging in a tree, mm. being blown around by the wind, triggering wind chimes <laughs> on his on his synth, which is just amazing. So it's worthwhile. Yeah. Give him give and him a follow. It's awesome. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah it's some clever stuff. Good. You know, as we as we get more of this gesture control with the uh, with the gyroscopes, we're going to see mm. more and more of that. You know. Uh, Sometimes it's handy to have uh, dedicated uh, control for that sort of thing, like the the enhancing and the overring. But uh, you know, with your watch, you can play with stuff like that, and it is kind of fun. Yeah, absolutely. So there's a lot of good. T- is, is it the Genki ring? Is a little ring that yeah, you put on your the finger? The Genki ring yeah. and and the Neova by Enhancia. That's it. Yeah, there's a couple of those. They're yeah. they're now uh, they've partnered with Roland, and so I'm kind of surprised that we aren't seeing them on, on yeah. the street corner yet. Yeah, but absolutely. it'll come. Kent Spong yeah. is on fire in the chat today, honestly. Well, see, I, I've not he, been able to... Uh, there was a, a comment about a run over... Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> what, um, what was that thing Rolf Harris used to advertise? The uh, stylophone. He was talking stylophone, about a run over yeah. stylophone. Hey, hey, hey. No, diagnosed with no, acute knocking, no knocking the stylophone. I got two of them no, over No, he here. wasn't knocking it. It was, <laughs> <laughs> it was a comparison Kent, that he's Kent on has fire. taken the... Uh, Kit has taken the award for uh, most uh, uh, posts that have to be approved for mild profanity <laughs> today. <laughs> he, he's really making our mods work hard. <laughs> Indeed. Um, right, so there you go. Let's move on. Um, that was Polywave from Finger Lab. Go check him out on the Mac App Store and the iOS App Store. And as, uh, as Mike points out, they're not hugely expensive, and you like what you see, then then go out and uh, buy. But you can get them all for free. You just have to do the in-app purchasing. Right. Um, I think it's about time we actually grilled our guest about the thing that we kind of got him on to speak about originally, and that's this bloody great thing, which is one of the most f- fantastic synthesizer books that you can buy today and um, certainly of the last, I don't know how many years, Synth Gems 1 which we'll speak about in a little while. But this is the rare, the odd, and the awesome. It's a fantastic collection, and it is in the traditional Buke style of beautiful books. A lovely heavyweight paper, gorgeous pictures. I've just, I literally just opened this one at random, um, which is... The Korg Sigma. I can never get the things right. There you go, the Sigma there. And there's just all sorts, and it smells. It's got that whole lovely new book smell. Um, not only is it a, a a collection of wonderful images that have been collected from some of the finest oh, synth oh, oh, museums Kent, in the world. Kent just said best book he's ever bought. There you that go. That is wow. that is such a huge compliment. Seriously. That's something you can put on the nope, um, on no, the soft no, cover. No irony at all, Kent. That that means a lot to me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, I I first heard, got wind of this when Mike approached me via our mutual friend Mark Doty. Um, to get some images of one of these babies. Thank you for, for doing the camera shots as well, Chris. Um, so, yeah, Fairlight's in here, of course. And it was my friend Tim over in L.A., Tim Curtis, who, who was able to supply. Those, who created those screenshots. And, and yeah. Rob, I can't thank you enough. We oh, were ready no to problem. pull the Fairlight from the book. I am glad we, that we saved it. Because we couldn't find one with a working monitor. Yeah, they are those those mm. uh, series one, and series two monsters are awful. Um, but not only is it a collection of, I think around, I think we established about sixty, 60. In, sixty instruments, um, about fifty of which are the key instruments, and then the others are kind of ancillary. Like when you mentioned the Prophet Five, Sorry. Wagyu, you can yes, you can request, <laughs> but we're not making a pop up version. Of <laughs> that would be cool. That would be cool. Um, yeah, so we had ancillary versions. So, like, if you have the Prophet Five, you've managed to squeeze the Prophet Ten. <laughs> no, no, 10. no. Got... I sing the body electric. He's talking about the Stylophone R8. The hardback is not limited. It's it's. We've already sold way more than five hundred. There you uh, go. <laughs> yeah, it, it, chat's going by, and people are making the wrong connections here. Anyway, sorry. 
That's okay. Go on, yeah. go on so, praising me, Rob. Please do. Other than all of these wonderful synthesizers, which have been immaculately photographed by the wonderful team that you have over there at Bukes, um, you've also written an essay for literally every single one of these instruments that tells us the history of them, how they work, what makes them unique, why, why you kind of consider them worthy of inclusion within this collection. And I know that you are, if you haven't already, you probably will get some stick because people are going to say, well, why isn't my favourite synthesizer in there? And and I know you've been very generous and said, look, if anybody disagrees, email me and I'll tell them why. Yeah, um, Mike, which is, Mike at Bukes.com. There Get you go. Up. I'm glad to talk to you. And not only have we got this collection, but also in the front of the book, there is um, information about how you went around getting all of this information and checking it and double checking it and triple checking it and the wonderful editorial team uh which includes chris who's in the chat room mark doty as well and a whole bunch of other people uh they're all mentioned but you also um do this thing where because i guess the the bulk of the audience is going to be people like us people who know and love synthesizers however as i mentioned to you in a conversation we had recently there was a book at my high school and i should have brought it up with me um but it uh, was a reference book, which meant we couldn't take it out of the library. But it detailed all the synthesizers of the day and how they were different and why they were unique and how they worked. And it was just this beautiful reference guide that taught me a lot. And I can see this doing exactly the same kind of job. Because in the front, you, you also explain how synthesizers work. And also there's a fantastic glossary in there for people who don't get all the three-letter acronyms that, that we bandy around all the time like a c b c d c a c g f g and so it's, it's a really completist book it, it it satisfies the nerds it satisfies the synth porn people and it satisfies the noobs it, it's it's a really great reference tool so after that bigging up tell us how synth gems one came into existence what was the the germ that uh, that was planted that uh, that okay this, book? this is a great story at least I hope it is. <laughs> um, now, it shouldn't surprise anybody that uh, at any given time, uh, Bukes is working on more than one title. Uh, at any given time, when we're promoting a book, we've got a library of books behind us, and we've got you know books ahead of us that are, that are in early stages. And um, I am incredibly privileged to be the guy that Kim bounces his ideas off. When Kim gets an idea for a book, he comes to me and we go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And one of the ideas that he's had in the back of his mind for a long time, uh, he, he first introduced it to me and he said, Mike, I've got this great idea that I'd like to do someday. I'm not really sure about the format. I'm not sure how it's going to come together, but I really want to do this. And I said, well, great, Kim, you know, you, you, you've knocked a bunch out of the park. What's this one? And he says, and I quote, the synthesizer drool book. And I said, okay. Uh, and he said, I said, okay, great. What is it? And he said, well, it's a synthesizer drool book. And I said, what does that even mean? Synthesizers don't drool. Uh, and he, he said, you know, we're going to have pictures of synthesizers for people to drool over. And I said, yeah, and? And, you know, there was this long silence. Um, anyway, uh, uh, sometime later, a considerable time later, um, we had a book that was in, uh, in progress um, that for external reasons had to be set aside for a little while. Um, we're hoping the title comes out eventually, but we had this block of time that suddenly opened up completely. And um, we came back to this idea and uh, Kim asked me to write it. And I need to I need to say this was an incredible responsibility because the first four Bukes titles have Kim as either the author or the co-author. Mm -hmm. And this was the first book that he handed off completely to somebody else. Uh, and I'm I, I, I'm really honored by that. Uh, yes, Kim. Oh, no. Here we go. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, he had an idea of how to go forward but we spent of the of the time we had we probably spent about a third of it just going back and forth the book went through probably eight or nine iterations before we got 
to where we were. And then it, it sort of started gathering momentum and eventually it turned into the, the way I always like to describe it. And I think this is on the website, but I'm just going to say it here now for the listeners. Um, if you've ever been to a traveling art exhibit, you know, the life of Monet or, uh, you know, Mondrian or, uh, you know, Bauhaus furniture design in the in the mid 20th century, that kind of thing. You always, you know, you get directed through the gallery. You see all the exhibits. Maybe you've got the little audio book playing in your ear. You come out through the, the, the gift shop and there amongst the Monet tea towels and the Monet baseball caps and the Monet bottle openers, they've got this gigantic book called the Exhibition Catalog. And this is a huge book which is, you know, designed to last forever. It's got big pictures of all the exhibits that you saw with background. So you can't actually take the exhibit home with you, but you can take the essence of it home. And later on, you can kick back on the couch with uh, a, a, a cup of uh, Bovril and um, go through it and sort of revisit the ideas. And Synth Gems is designed to be an exhibition catalog for a synthesizer exhibition, an exhibition of the synthesizer, not only as something that creates beauty, but as a thing of beauty itself. Synthesizers as works of art. And um, the fact that this uh, exhibition could never exist in real life because these instruments came from three different museums, uh, two in Switzerland and one in the States. Um, still, it's it's a chance to be there to sort of virtually walk around. No Wagyu synth gems will not have a chapter on the Timberwolf. <laughs> um, I th Kent, Kent is on fire again. Yeah, it's, it's nice to see a picture of Diego. <laughs> it's not in my toilet. You know, Kent, we really didn't need to know that. I mean, we really I hope that's didn't. not the one I'm picking up. Uh -huh. <laughs> anyway, um, so so the the <laughs> the point is that the whole idea is for people to get to walk around these machines because you know everybody talks about oh well, I want to look at these oh the synth porn the synth porn go out on the internet and try to find a good picture of some of these instruments they don't exist and this was a chance for us to really show the beauty of these machines mm -hmm. and 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 i say the first i wanted it to have it on the inside cover uh kim didn't go for that but it is the first it's the first line in the preface mm -hmm. this is a book about beauty yeah. and so that's where it really came from there was a need for this to look at these machines as the objects of art that they really are yeah absolutely and you know it's <sighs> It must have been a hell of a job. Oh, God, the, don't get is, me started. <laughs> there are so many synthesizers <laughs> out there in the, that have uh, you know, graced our, our, our ears and our hands for at least the last 50-odd years. How does one whittle it down to, say, the 60-odd that you've got in here? I mean, I, I guess the title is a giveaway that there are, there are going to be subsequent editions the, of this book. The, the, the Volume 1 got tacked on way early. Right. Um, and I have to I have to give mad props to Kim because it was a gamble. Yeah. Um, you know, we're still dealing with the, the, the sort of the, the blowback from the fact that it, it, there will be a Synth Gems 2. And it is the only title yeah. um, that uh, we that people know we're coming out with. Yeah. You know, every other title, it's either a Kickstarter or when it's available for pre-order, you, you learn about it then. But so so there's always going to be sort of the specter of Synth Gems 2 hanging over us. <laughs> but we had to do it because my initial list was 110 instruments. Right. And then we whittled it down to about 75. And ultimately, it was a, a discussion between Kim and me as to which would go in. Uh, but then we had the logistical problems because we had to find one of these instruments that was available to photograph in good quality that had, uh, you know, that was cherry, that was that was perfect. And um, that ain't easy for some of these. And we we mm -hmm. had to do some we had to do some fairly clever workarounds. But uh, Kim has reminded me in, in the chat, uh, we have to give a huge shout out to the people who took these pictures. Uh, in, in Switzerland, it was a gentleman named Peter Marr. Uh, mm -hmm. Peter is not only a phenomenal uh, photographer, but he is also a huge synth nut. 
and uh, he he actually has worked on things like software for the Waldorf Wave. Um, a really really cool guy. Uh, but mad props have to be given to the people at EMEAP in Philadelphia. Kim couldn't be there. And the whole process of Kim looking over Peter's shoulder and calling up this stuff in Photoshop and saying, that'll work, that won't work, move it a tiny bit, we need the angle better. He wasn't there to do that. And these guys at EMEAP, they had the patience of saints. Mm. Some of these pictures had 50 takes before we finally got one that we liked. And so they were about 15% of the, of the, the shots in the, uh, in the book and they were easily 90% of the work. Yeah. Um, and Drew Razon and Gino Wong and Mike Hunter and their team, God bless you guys. Yeah, absolutely. And cause we have to bear in mind that all of this was happening in a world where we're shutting down and, yeah, and travel was, is restricted. You it, told me a, a tale about how Kim had to get somewhere and had to go. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, Kim will probably uh, correct me in uh, in chat over the story. But as I understand it, um, Kim had to get through Germany in one day because yeah. <laughs> it was the only way with his vaccination status. And, and with Germany having locked its borders, it was like he had to clear with customs and then be out you know and and so he had to bomb across germany yeah. uh and you know if it wasn't for the pandemic i would have been in philadelphia yeah um and it, it just it made things so hard yeah and uh we're really grateful that it turned out as well as it did well i mean the, the very fact that this book came out uh and uh, was was achieved in in such testing times is 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 a miracle and and a great one because you know we've got this wonderful thing to to drool over and i'm hoping that many people buy this uh for their christmas stockings although they'll need quite a hefty one to to carry it um so i'm going to hand it over to dom and chris if they've got any questions or if anybody's asked anything in the chat please do uh obviously we've got mike on the yes. show we've got kim, kim in the chat yeah kim um, says got... kim says with a great team the impossible becomes possible very true and and that is just so true and i have to thank everyone my god the list is incredible yeah but yeah more questions from the chat anywhere just hit me up ask so, me sure sasquatch in the uh chat asks have you considered a companion cd dvd with audio samples demonstrations with it or you know, we have any other form? we we have but it won't be a physical medium uh, for something like that, if we do something, and I'm not going to promise that we will, but if we do something like that, it'll be on our website. Um, we will we will make it available to stream and maybe download. But that is still early, early days, and I don't want to promise anything really. I did. I did ask Mike earlier uh, a few weeks ago whether he was going to do an accompanying audio cassette, and uh, yeah, got got told <laughs> in no uncertain <laughs> terms that, that that was yeah. a no. Um, but never mind. Dom, have you got anything you'd like yes, to, to put Yes, please. Uh, how long did it take? Um, <laughs> uh, start to finish? Yeah. Ten, uh, 14 weeks, I think. Is that all? Oh, God. I was dying. I mean, literally, <laughs> literally, Dom, my wife and daughter were worried that they were going oh, to find me dead on the floor. I was working 16-hour days, seven days a week. I was catching. I, I had a, a bed back here and I would catch three hours of sleep and I'd get up and they'd have to make sure I ate. They had to make sure that, you know, that I was looking, that I, that I took my heart medication, um, you know, and they were really, really worried. But that you, you know, definitely need an Apple Watch, crikey. Well, yeah. the, I mean, the thing <laughs> is, the thing is, we had this a very nicely laid out dream state. Hi, Scott. I love you. And I'll tell you about the Roland U50 later. Um, but we had this whole schedule laid out and the first part of it slipped a bit because Kim and I could not agree on the format. The hardest thing about this book was figuring out what it was going to be and what synths were going to be in it. Once we got going, it was fine, but I was churning out this stuff. And toward the end, when we were doing the editing, Diana Smethers, if you're out there, I love you. God bless you. We will never do a book without you. Uh, she's our copy editor. Um, and I was working with four editors and it was, it was bananas. Well, that's um, incredible. I mean, if it, it, I expected you to say a lot longer than that, I guess, but if you're sending stuff, well, uh, well or now, receiving Dom, stuff... now, now, Dom, I will point out that a lot of this came from the fact that I've been doing this stuff for 40 years. 
So, you know, technically this book has been decades in the making and all I was doing was throwing myself into high gear and putting it on paper. But yeah, so I'm sorry, you were saying? No, no, no. Uh, I was going to say, I mean, presumably you didn't get to play all of these keyboards because some were in, uh, you know, Sweden and all the rest of it. They were in Switzerland. Yeah, Kim did. And, uh, (laughs) you know, and and one of these days I will, I, I, I really want to get over there i want to go to smem and thank them in person i want to go to synthorama i have a standing invitation at emmy app to come in and do a set of workshops a seminar play a concert and so that's definitely going to happen but i'd like to get over to switzerland of these instruments people ask i was just going to ask (laughs) i have of of the 60 instruments in this book i have recorded in a studio with about half of them Uh uh-huh uh at one time or another i have owned about 20 of them so uh so of and, the ones you've owned which is your favorite of the ones that you haven't which is the most the one that excites you most to own if you see what i mean um the of the ones that i had um i still and and its circumstances are weird um i i i for stuff i won't go into unless people are really curious i've had probably over a hundred synthesizers come in and out of my studio in the 90s i had a, a thousand square foot room that was wall to wall a frame stands mm-hmm. um and uh nowadays uh really the only two keyboards that i play all the time are the nord and and the hydra um and my instrument which is here where you can't see it but th- going through this stuff sometimes i sell a synth and i really regret it sometimes i regret it and then i don't i've owned a profit vs four times <laughs> because i would get one i would love it I would play it. It would drive me insane. <laughs> I would sell it. I would miss it. And I'd buy Start another one. Start it and, all over again. And, exactly. Um, so of the ones that I've owned, the one that I don't have right now that I still miss occasionally is the Prophet T8. Oh, uh, that, that is was, absolutely that was, my that all-time was favorite. Just, synth. That wow. was just a, a gorgeous yeah gorgeous machine and um and one and it was actually the first one that was that was the first one where where kim and i really locked horns he didn't want it in there he wanted the profit five instead even even oh, given the choice though but see what well happened. well here's the thing though i'm talking about physical beauty yeah that was my first criterion there are some synths in there that are tremendously influential that are not in the book because they're ugly they're boring <laughs> and i didn't want that in my book but w- eventually it became obvious to me that we had to do the sequential thing the way we did it uh the t8 had its own separate piece and we talked about the five and the ten i originally wanted to emphasize the ten and just have the five in sort of a sidebar but finding a ten that was in good shape to photograph was not easy yeah, um yeah, so so the t8 is really the one um i currently what's what's interesting here dom i currently own only about i think three of the instruments that are in the book but what i'm now collecting are instruments that were inspired by the ones in the book that i can get that i can get my hands on and either do stuff that i that you that the ones in the book don't do or are just affordable you yeah. know, I love the JX3P, so now I have a JX03. Mm-hmm. I love the Nord Lead, but I've got a Nord Wave. I bought this. This was my, my gift to myself after the book was done Brilliant. because the Nord Wave lets you load your own samples. And every synthesizer is better if it can make Mellotron sounds. So so one last question, if I, if I may, then, sure, for sure. me. I mean, um, now you've had, like, so much experience over the years of all this stuff, I just see the Hydra synth popping up on everyone's lists of loves, really, particularly mm-hmm. in the last sort of few months. What is it that puts it underneath that Nord in your rack and, and makes it, oh, and I just use this now, a kind of synth like that? Well, well, to quote Charles Nelson Riley, oh, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> That's not the answer I expected. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Yeah, I get it. Oh, yeah, basically that. 
<laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> no, it's just it is it is a tremendous, it is a tremendous instrument. It is it it sounds glorious it 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 plays so well it has so much nuance and the operating system just invites you in there are so many synthesizers out there that have all kinds of potential but you look at the front panel and you just say i would rather die <laughs> and and the hydrosynth you know it's glorious it's so easy to dive in i actually on my youtube channel dr mike metley i have an 11 part series on on the hydrosynth oh nice thank that you I that's did. amazing and and the thing is each piece is like 45 minutes it's like i don't know how many hours of material because diving in and showing this thing is just a joy mm. and if you don't have one it may not ben i'd love to do that um uh the uh um this is my audition actually um <laughs> the um but, but i thought the, it was mine <laughs> Well, Don, you've, you've got Wait your a minute. own. Wait a you've minute. got your own soapbox. <laughs> you've got your own soapbox. I just. Um, but uh, uh, the, the point is, Sundays be there. Um, but but honestly, it's just it's an it's an amazing instrument. It really is. And the the when we eventually get to that era, it's going to be one that 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 we feature. That classic. We, yeah, that we right. talk that we talk about. Brilliant. Thank uh, you. That, that, that no, totes, uh, I get it. That, uh, that's amazing. Thank you. I mean, because it, it, it keeps popping up. And I, I was just talking about earlier about selling some of this stuff that I'm not using to replace well, it with something. I, and it's, the problem, it's the one problem, the one problem oh. with the Hydrosynth is they now have four different form factors. And I want them all. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, Numina. That's oh, my gosh. Problem. Jesse, Jesse Sola, phenomenal, phenomenal ambient musician from Denver. Uh, dear, dear friend, thank you so much for popping in. I, I, I really appreciate it, Jesse. It's good to see you. Hugs hugs to Kristen. And uh, we'll, we'll talk sometime soon, yeah? Anyway, um, so, so, you know, everything gets you something different. The thing that really, that really sort of knocked me down was the the explorer this is a machine that costs less than a lot of the other three octave uh you know uh synth that you can carry around models but it does way more it's got polyphonic aftertouch and they don't mm. cut anything out mm. of the engine it is a full hydrosynth wow. there is nothing missing yeah. And and that's true of all four of them, except the deluxe has two of them, and you know uh, you can layer them and, and do the bitambral stuff, which personally, by the way, I think is overkill. This machine is very very powerful, and and I can't imagine trying to use two of them mm. uh, in a mix, much less you know live with one in each hand. Hey, you're you're not allowed to say anything is overkill on here. No, no, it's all good. No. It's all good. It, it, well, it's all good for somebody. It's all good for somebody. But it, you know, um, and uh, you know, I just, I, 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 I love it. And a couple of, of, if I may, a couple of questions that have flown by. Um, yeah, thank you for that. But just before you say, and I love your enthusiasm as well. Just well, amazing. You thank know, you. This is, thank you, this Dr. is Mike. what I do. This is what I have been doing, considering what I used to do for a living. Um, you know, get me on, to, get me on to physics stories. And and you'll understand why I'm why I'm doing this. That's a different channel. Um, it, it, no, 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 no. At some point or another, I'll have to get into that. I got some great stories, but anyway. Um, so why why we're like, at it here? Yeah. Um, I seen the body electric says, uh, please tell Doctor Mike his hydrosynth videos are great. And I thought that was a, a great thing. Are those on uh, YouTube? My YouTube Where can people channel, find Dr., those? Doctor Mike Metley. Um, and I wish I had a classier name, but I've never figured out how to reset it. Um, but yeah, I've got an 11 part, uh, series on the, um, on, on the hydrosynth and I am about halfway through, uh, what's probably going to be an 11 or 12 part series on the cord wave state. Nice. Um, and, uh, I, I've been stuck between part five and part six for about eight months now. Um, that is a much, much harder because the thing mm -hmm. is, I seem to have found my niche. Everybody's writing to me and saying, you're the only person who goes through this feature by feature slow enough 
for us to understand it. I'm really low tech. It's a one camera shoot and, and uh, you know, but uh, apparently people really need that. And so for my sins, I'm going to spend the rest of my life doing videos on synthesizers that are really hard to learn. <laughs> uh, so, you know, um, but uh, uh, one question that came by, I forget who said it was, were there machines that you wanted to have that you couldn't find uh, in, um, yeah, uh, well, there's, there's one, uh, right there. Um, is, were there a synth or two that I, that I didn't want to include in the book, but for history's sake or popularity, I had to include in any way beauty aside, uh, answer. There were some that I didn't want at first. Um, but Kim and I had these long discussions and I have to really give him props. He, he, he and I discovered when we went back and forth on this, that there were machines that either he or I just didn't want to have in the book, just didn't want to have it. But the beauty of our relationship, he is one of my very, very, yeah, thanks, Kim. Thanks a lot. Um, <laughs> the, uh, um, uh, but I am so proud of the fact that he and I can speak unguardedly. Kim is one of the gentlest people you will ever met. He is one of my best friends, but we can argue if we have to. Um, he's never raised his voice to me. I don't know if he's physically capable of it, but we've, um, we've, we argued about this. And I would say out of the 60, 60 cents in there, there were probably three or four that he insisted on, and there were three or four that I insisted on. And, you know, in his case, it was, we have to have it in here. I'm like, eh, I just, I don't want to put that in here. And in, in my case, it was, you know, this is here. And he's just like, I don't see what you see in it. And in all of these cases, when I got to read and research the stuff that he really wanted, I found enough in there so that I had no trouble producing, mm -hmm. you know, good writing. And when he got to see the stuff I wanted in person, he would write me back or Skype me and just say, my God, Mike, I see it now. I'm walking around it. I'm looking at it and I get it. So, you know, we were very lucky. We were very lucky in that regard. But the, um, the truth of the matter is that when you had those arguments, you settled it with a game of this, surely. Um, my deck is actually in one of the drawers behind me, uh, and um, I have the original, so it's way out yeah. of date. Yeah, this um, this is a, a Mark One, shall we say? Yeah, but uh, no, we we actually, you know, we've we have never actually locked horns to the point where one or the other of us has to back down. We can always, always. Um, we can always talk and yeah. and that process i mean you have to realize that the people that i ha worked with on this book who held my feet to the fire all of them have were fantastic chris meyer is one of the very few people in the world of synthesis that i will happily and proudly call a mentor he and i go back decades and he just would not give an inch when i wasn't properly researched when I hadn't written something clearly enough. Uh, it was, it was amazing. And, and, you know, uh, I talk about Gordon Reed and Mark Doty all day. Don't. Uh, so like, <laughs> well, now, hang on, <laughs> hang on. Because, because I got a letter from somebody when, when, when the, when the cover was first published and had the names on it. And, 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 you know, it was just like, you know, Mike, you've written a 320 page book and we're going to have to wait for the thousand page rebuttal from Doty. And, <laughs> and I said, and I said, Doty edited the book. The book. I am crazy. <laughs> I am not stupid. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, funny, it's funny you should mention him because, and I don't mean this any disrespect to Dominic. Um, we did ask him first if he would come on the show because we knew that would be a lot of fun to have oh, both of oh, you on yeah, at the same cool, time. <laughs> sorry, Dom. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, he, um, but, 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 yeah, uh, but you get you get him and me in. A, he 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 and we I. We plan to. He and I have a, a, a very, and, and go ahead and laugh, he and I have a strange but wonderful relationship. Um, he is one of the few educators on synthesis that I respect backwards and forwards. Mm -hmm. And people love to pick on him. They love to, to you, know, uh, uh, you know, take pot shots at the stuff that he feels passionately. But he know, he's forgotten more than most of those people know. 
Okay. Yeah. He is a, uh, he's just an amazing educator and he's an amazing guy. And he and I can have knockdown drag out fights. We can mm. yell at each other, but at the end, we we reach consensus and yeah. he says he has said to me that i'm the only person that he will spend over an hour on the phone just talking sense with because i get him and he gets me and the stuff on the introduction to the synthesizer the glossary all the pedagogical stuff where we're teaching mark approved every word mm -hmm. and that made it what it is he is just incredible so yeah. there's that no well, we we definitely plan to get you and him on together. Uh, unfortunately, his uh, his paymasters wouldn't let him out for the afternoon because um, yeah, obviously yeah. he he works. Yeah, um, he does, and you know. But he has he has said that he might be available fairly soon. He's given me a little window, so we might uh, we might have him on sooner than we hoped. Um, and I'll, I will let you know because that would be please a, do. Now, he's, be a good he, show. He and I he and I are we, we love to talk about this stuff. Yeah, absolutely. and, uh, and we yeah, love as, to hear. as you probably gather, I love to talk about anything. But hey. <laughs> <laughs> um, and oh, yeah, people yeah. were asking. You had asked. You know, what were the ones that I wish I had? Yeah. Um, well, you know, there are there are various you know ways to qualify that. You know, would I wish to have them if, for instance, I had um, uh, Kent Spong as my my housemaid? So that I keep everything. <laughs> no, that is a thought. Um, you don't want that because he'll put your synthesizers in the bathroom. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, you know, if I mean, if I could, you know, the the problem is. As the years have gone by, and this is something something that, that people don't realize, I'm not a gearhead anymore. Um, I had it burned out of me. Um, I, I have fewer and fewer boxes and make more and more music. I'm releasing, uh, I, I'm doing stuff for planetarium shows. I'm doing soundtracks. Uh, I play live on the air on my online radio station at, uh, once a week if I can, but at least once every two weeks. I'm doing more music now that I have two keyboards, a couple of modules, and an iPad than I ever did when I had that room full of synthesizers. It's just, I was able to write this book because I can appreciate these machines from an objective level. It's not just a matter of, of looking at them and going, oh God, I wish I had this and this and this and this. There are ones I'd love to play with. There are ones I'd love to have an afternoon with where I could do some multi-track recordings, pick up some sample material. Sure, most of them. But to actually own, um, I'd have to think. The T8, I would, I would love to have a T8 again. Um, and, uh, you know, there are, I'd love to have a Liberation. I'd love to have a Liberation back. I miss mine. Um, you know, the trick there is to put it on a stand without actually trying to hold yeah. it. My, 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 <laughs> my, my spine, uh, would, would not allow it. I've often wondered, I've often wondered if Kent or someone of similar skill could figure out a way to get the guts out of it and put the guts with the power supply so that all you have are the controls. Cause you know, the, people don't realize the entire machine is inside that. All mm. you have on the remote cable is the audio output and the power supply. Um, and if you could move that, you could probably get half the weight off of it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, I mean, I have, I, I go through phases. There are ones that I really love. There are certainly a lot that I admire, not just for their beauty, but because I think that they're, um, you know, that they're just amazing. But, uh, you know, a, a lot of the ones here, the, the key, if you really want to pick this book apart, Look at the little tiny pictures of the synthesizers that are not featured but are related to the ones that are. Because if you poke through that, you'll see some of my particular loves and, and in at least one case, a hate. There is a machine that I had in there uh, in a, uh, a, a tiny picture in the corner of a page, which I put in under massive protest because uh, it, it was one of the most important synthesizers ever built and it is ugly just <laughs> ugly um and i didn't want it in the book but uh, i had to have it so wow. there dare, we, dare we ask what it was oh it's the dx7 and uh, we seem to have lost Yay! the feed to um to yeah, mike's yeah, camera yeah. so uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> how did i know that was coming 
<laughs> no, the, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The, the, the DX7 is a mud pie with membrane switches. <laughs> it, it just it's just the ugliest and it's terrible on a stage the switches fail and then you have to replace the, the, the front panel um it's got this little tiny sob of a display the 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 velocity yeah 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 <laughs> wank, wank, wank. the velocity range isn't very good it's just yamaha has made so many better fm synthesizers including the dx1 Yes. Which is, which well, is look, no, if we if we get if you get to put them side by side, then the DX one and the DX five are clearly prettier machines. Yes. For and sure. that's the point of the book. There are exactly. a lot of great I talk about the I talk about the dark times. If you look at the table of contents, there's a five year span where there are no synthesizers in the book. Mm. From nineteen eighty six to nineteen ninety one, there is nothing absolutely nothing and there's a reason for that because that was the era where we had these dull black machines with menu buttons and lcds and practically no, no left hand control nothing to see here. and, and they gave you here. and they gave you you know they gave you more polyphony and more multi-chamberality and all this in the era where people were starting to use computers so that they could easily sequence bunches of different boxes they were cramming more and more sh into one box and it was impossible to work with so yeah you're not going to see those uh yeah yeah well well i guess that's when they were so, all selling the good stuff as well to buy all that you um know, so. you know and it was just it was it, it, it was a bad time it really was for for beauty and synthesizers and yes tao safi music you you got it and and Dieter, um, the DSS one was not in the book because it was it was a fascinating machine, but it was an enormous pain in the ass to work with. I owned one. Um, Cresshead, it's in there. Um, yeah, I'm just watching these things go by. Well, what about this? What about that? <laughs> yeah, and and the JD800 was the one that broke the spell. The JD800 was the one where it's just. I mean, just look at it. It, it it's so inviting it's like hey we've made playing with synthesizers fun again um and so i've got, I've got a real soft spot uh for 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 that um anywho um so uh and the profit vs uh is in the book it is quite beautiful for a button machine uh and the microwave is not in the book but the wave is yeah. Um, is there a list? Someone asked in the chat if there was a list. I presume it's up to us um, to buy the book. I'm, to find I'm out. actually, I, I prefer that people buy the yeah. book because you get down the That's list. I, I, I was giving the list to a lot of the people who I talked to, who I referenced because they were curious. Mm. And I'd get about two thirds of the way down. And they'd guess, okay, okay, we get it. We get it. Because there's just the one thing I will say people, are, people do ask about the time span. And that I can tell you, it's the last 30 years of the 20th century mm -hmm. we start in 1971 with the um uh with the the mini moog model a um and we have the b and the c as well as the model d and we end in uh 2000 kent i'm ignoring you uh <laughs> and we end in the year 2000 with the elisa's andromeda which oh, was uh, okay. which was a very important machine uh for a lot of reasons um and uh and in between we've got you know uh we've got all kinds of uh, early monophonics we've got uh home keyboards we've got the the, the so-called paraphonic synths that led into the true polyphony um some really really rare ones and and some that are that are iconic so it's it's just i think it's a nice mix it's nice. a really i have to say having you know read the book um a few Multiple times, times yeah. per day, yeah, for, for, for work and for pleasure. It is, it's a, it's a really fascinating book, and there's not a choice in there that I disagree with at all. And then uh, you're alone in that. I, you're well, alone I, in that because every does, single person I talked to has said there's been one synth, and they've gone, that's in there, but it's always been different. Yeah, it's yeah. always been different. Tom Oberheim, uh, Marcus Ryle, Dave Smith, uh, Dave Rossum, uh, uh, Niall Steiner. Um, all these people that I've talked to, they were, they all had one that they weren't sure about and they had some that were faves and it's always different, which yeah. I've, I've just love. Um, yeah. it was, it was great fun, but no, I mean, so I've, I've gone, and Kent, 
Kent, listen to me. The PPG 360 was supposed to be in this book. It's one of the ones we couldn't photograph. And I hint, that's the only synth that I hint a tiny bit in the book we're going to try to get back to in volume two. Mm-hmm. We really wanted the Wave computer uh, in this book. I wanted it. The circumstances for photographing it would have meant that literally 20 other synthesizers wouldn't have been photographed. So just leave it there. Um, <laughs> I, I love the PPGs. We're going to get them into volume two if I have anything to say about it. But they're not in the book because they couldn't be in the book. Every single synth that's in this book has a story behind it. Some of them are funny. Some of them are heartbreaking. Um, Talking to the son of the developer of one of these synthesizers who's been bedridden with dementia for years and who Mm. basically said, I can't even get my father to tell me coherently about what he did. You know, discovering that the trail was lost. I mean, stuff like that, it just kills you. So the other thing I tried to do with this book was to talk to these people and get them to, you know, to put this stuff down in print while we still could get them. It's yeah. it's really important. Yeah, that is very, very important. important. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So speaking of uh, volume two, <laughs> is there anything <laughs> you can tease to us? Provided that you win the arm wrestling match with Kim and ac- actually get it into at, the at book, the like at, yeah, um, the the one that I think was was uh, sort of a heartbreaking one for me uh, that we just we couldn't get access to one that we could photograph quickly enough was uh, the polymog. Um, it is a it is an extremely underrated machine and uh, a lot of people including some of my esteemed editors have said that it was you know it was a failure it was not what everybody wanted well i'm sorry 71 mini mogs in one box who the hell even wants that (laughs) um what it was and and dave loose you know said over and over again people don't understand it people don't understand what it was designed for and he was right Everybody took that as saying, yeah, Dave, Dave was, doesn't like the way people treated him. Dave doesn't like the fact that, that people look down on this machine. So we would come up with that. Well, no, he was right. In literal practical terms, people were trying to use the polymoke in a way that it was not designed to be used. And the reason it, sh- it the, there were, there were reasons why it failed. The primary one was that they were incredibly unreliable. But the people who got it really got it. And so that's a machine that, that I'm, I'm, I really want to have in volume two. Mm-hmm. And the, yeah. other th- the other thing that I hint at in the book is uh, Synthorama has an incredible collection of PPGs. They've got, a, they've got a 360A. They've got a Wave 2. They've got a Wave Term A and a Wave Term B. They've got a processor keyboard. And we're going to look at a way to talk about those all at once. Uh, because that's that's really important. Talking about the wave without talking about the PPG, that was tough. Realizing we couldn't get the 360 in there, and I had to start from scratch with the wave. There are a couple of those like that where I wasn't able to lay down groundwork the way I wanted to, and I did the best I could. And you've done a very good job. Well, thank uh, you. <laughs> Any other questions, well, guys? Come on, yeah. come on. <laughs> One more up. for me. Uh, what about, uh, you know, so we've talked a lot about vintage synthesizers and, yep. of course, the Hydra synth. What other modern synthesizers, you know, like Andromeda on, uh, would Trip you cite trigger? as being? That What's that? Pull, pull my daisy? Trip my trigger? <laughs> Make me moist? Um, <laughs> I've never played any of them. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> Um, well, uh, I have, I have fairly quirky tastes. Um, one of the things that I tend to really go for are machines that put a lot of power in a small package. Um, I have, uh, an entire floor to ceiling shelf here of very compact, very powerful machines that, um, I, um, um, pull out when I need them. So I've got a micro freak. Um, I have a, um, I've got an Artifon Orba, 
Um, I've got uh, a Jasper, which needs to be fixed. That was built for me by uh, someone who uh, didn't have to do it. And it was a, a wonderful gift. Um, and so there are a variety of these little ones. The ones that I tend to really enjoy that are modern, mm. the Hydrosynth really knocks it out of the park. But there are ones that have certain... Um, certain user interface things that I find really special. The Nord Wave, the, the whole thing about, uh, and this is something, it's one of the jokes. Um, Kim, I told Kim, Kim asked me if there was ever a book that, that I wanted to write that was entirely me. And uh, what I said was, um, I want to do a book that's like, you know, five inches by five inches square that is nothing but pictures of left-hand controllers. <laughs> I want to get the left hand controllers of every synthesizer ever made wheels, ribbons, you know, all the way back to the electronic sack button thirties. Um, and, and, uh, so, but when somebody gets it really right, I, you know, people say, well, I come from the piano. I come from the, the organ background. I come literally, I am a lead synth player. I have for medical reasons, no hand independence. I cannot, other than very basic octaves in the left hand, I can't play two-handed. So I have always been a right hand on the keys, left hand on the controls guy. So when somebody gets left hand controls really right, Nord Wave, um, that tends to really attract me. The reason I never got a lead is because virtual analog, you know, that there, there were flavors that I liked, flavors that I didn't like, and I wasn't hugely big on the Nord flavor. But when I discovered that I could put Mellotron sounds in the Nord wave, then I had to have one because Mellotrons make everything better. Yeah. <laughs> Mel Mellotrons, people ask me, you know, no. what is your sound? My sound is the Mellotron flute. I can play the Mark II flute, and, and it's, it's my instrument, and I, I just I adore it. So, so the Nord Wave is a good example of something where you can have this tremendously expressive uh, means of playing. And actually, that's the Micro Freak is a little bit disappointing in that regard because it has that cool keyboard that does kind of the poly pressure, but they didn't do anything else with it. It's not really a good MPE uh, uh, keyboard. Um, so, uh, you know, those are the ones that leap to mind. Of the ones that are out there right now, I had a Matrix Brute. For a very long time, uh, mm -hmm. I, I recently sold it because it it and I just weren't getting along. The Polybrute intrigues me uh, a, a little bit. Arturia, I love the build of their synths. I love the people. It's a great company. I've got a key step over here that I use all the time. Um, but uh, other than that, you know, I'd have to I'd have to really think. There are there are a lot of companies that are making synthesizers that they think are impressive, that do absolutely nothing for me. Um, so, so it's an odd question and I'd have to think about it more, Chris, really. I do like the, the fact that in your, uh, the, the latter part of the book that covers the nineties, as you, you kind of, uh, intimated that, you know, the back end of the eighties was pretty bland and boring and the JD 800 was the one that broke the spell, as you said. Yep. Um, and everything that comes after the JD 800, I won't list them all because as you say, you want people to go and buy the book, but I was very surprised and pleasantly so that you included uh, things like the Technics um, WSA. Uh, that's one, one of the. Th that's one of the three I still own. Yeah, and the the AM One X as well, which I didn't expect to see in there, but th thought it was good. And of course, the one that we share a passion about the uh, the Korg Prophecy. Uh, it was just uh, it was uh, nice uh, to have those in there. Uh, you you saw me hugging mine. It's yes, not actually, indeed. It's not actually out right now. It's it's in the next room, but that is a machine. That was actually the very first synthesizer review I ever wrote for recording back in nineteen ninety six. Um, and, um, the, uh, uh, and Ben, yes, the expander and the matrix 12 are in the book and I don't know which expander story you mean. I, that the expander was my entree into this industry and, uh, I ran a printed, uh, fanzine for it. I'm, I, I got to know a lot of people. Uh, so I have no idea what story he means. Um, but, uh, also synthetic asked, uh, he said, uh, am I into alternate controllers? And the answer is absolutely, absolutely I am. Um, because human interface is everything. Push, turn, move is the book that I would have written if I had the lyrical mind and the beautiful eye of Kim Bjorn. I was, I was proud to edit that book because it's just, it, it talks about what I think about. The only thing that matters to me 
is how the human being touches the music. That is everything to me. I can play a synth. You can, you can get a synth that sounds like anything these days, for God's sake. But if you don't want to touch it, what's the point? And so alternative controllers are something I really went through because I had to find one that fit with the way my hands want to work and the way my mind works. And I own 20 of them. I had a stack of alternative controllers up to the ceiling. I found the one that worked for me and I had to sell all the others. And some of them were hard to sell because they, they weren't well liked. But I'm, I'm back down to my one now and, and it, it makes me very happy. Well, you'd be in good company with uh, Andy, who's synthetic, because uh, I don't think I've ever seen anybody with more unusual controllers than him. <laughs> I'd, lo I'd love. He's really I'd got an impressive collection. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to see. A, I'd love to see a list, um, because I think I've tried them all except for except for the continuum, because that's just way out of my range. Um, and uh, so you know that that's just something. Um, and Wagyu. Sonically, the Z1 is a superset of the Prophecy. Uh, in terms of hands-on experience, it's much less fun to play. Okay. I, I, I had them both, and, and I sold the Z1 very, Z1, excuse me. Um, I sold, I sold the, the Z1 very quickly, but the Prophecy, cold dead fingers, never getting rid of it. No, that, yeah, same here, same here. But, uh, and, and to chime in on that, because I, I have both, um, the Z1 is a fantastic synthesizer and does amazing things. But there is something about it sonically uh, that isn't quite the prophecy. And, and the, the other thing with the prophecy and the thing that I really fell in love with was the fact that I am no keyboard player uh, at all. But as to, you know, to, to um, echo what Mike was saying about the, the left hand controllers, it was those things coupled with the aftertouch that actually kind of made me sound like I kind of knew what I was doing. Um, yeah, you know, just to, to roll the log and latch that log, log? Uh, yeah, uh, kind of I up want like that. Log! Yeah, uh, and then, um, and then mess around with the after touch and get all that. Yeah, it was, it's just, it's a really clever little machine. It's, it's, and it's a gorgeous little machine. I questioned and its existence when it first came out. I thought, who wants to buy a monophone for that Everybody questions much money? its existence. I talk about that in the book. Yeah, everybody said Korg has lost their freaking minds. Yeah, who the hell is going to want a mono synth? And the answer is, uh, anybody who heard it. They're just yeah. they're they're so. And that's lovely. when I changed my mind. So, that's exactly so when I, I went to uh, the Z1 launch in in London and played a, a prophecy. I just got to have this. this is, yep. I've got to have this thing. Uh, to back back before the iPad or, or any easy software based solutions were available. When I was when I was playing festivals, I ran a series of festivals at Arcosanti in the the Arizona desert between 2003 2012. Made a lot of friends there, including Kim. That's how I met Kim. Um, and uh, when I was doing hardware setups, um, very often I would have the Prophecy not only on its own, but also as a, a controller for something else. So one year I had the Prophecy in my expander. Boy, was that a good combination. Uh, one year I had the Prophecy in the Alesis Micron. Um, so it was just, it was a dynamite machine. It was, yeah. it was, it, it's just very welcoming. And, and yeah. you know, I, I, you know, welcoming. And it's um, one one of the few synthesizers that I've made money from, as in you know, from using it as in the oh, yeah. forms. Of, yeah, so because it would have to be in everything that I do. Yep. And uh, so, come on, guys, I'm just getting warmed up here. <laughs> well, <laughs> we are we are kind of I know, I know. Just Let's a little get bit. back to the news. Let's get back to the news. Well, Sean just mentioned just very quickly asked me to ask if Axis Virus or Nord are in the book. Um, the Nord lead is. Cool. And I want to uh, apologize in advance. Um, the, the original Nord lead was, was the one that I, I actually write about the Nord lead series and the original Nord lead is actually fairly hard to find. They, they didn't sell very many of them and it was only on the market for about 18 months. The Nord lead two is what we feature in the book and people don't realize this, but they featured the Nord lead two. It went off the market, so they had the Nord Lead 3, and they brought back the Nord Lead 2X. And the 2X, the only difference between the 2X and the 2 is that the 2X had 
different livery on the front panel. It had more polyphony and it had more room for presets. Otherwise, it was identical. They're patch identical machines. And between the two, that machine, I mean, think about this. In the era of digital, where things go out of style all the time, those two machines had a run of 17 years. Gosh. And the reason why there was the gap was because of the Nord Lead 3 which everybody referred to as, you know, a Nord too far um, because they <laughs> added a bunch of stuff that people didn't want. They didn't like the encoders. They didn't like the LEDs. They didn't like the fact that it had a display. They, oh, it had aftertouch. What the hell? <laughs> um, which is all the stuff that made it interesting. You know, the, the encoders are occasionally a problem. But that was the machine I really wanted, but it was just like I didn't like the virtual analog. And, and Gordon Reed, God damn him, said, well, why don't you get a Nord Wave? Because, you know, it's got aftertouch and it, you can put Mellotron samples in it. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, I will kill you. But yeah, um, so I ended up having to find one. And there it is. So thanks, cool. Gordon. Uh, so, so, <laughs> Thank so, you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So there you go. Um, Synth Gems One is out now. Is shipping all around the world. It costs uh, well, sixty nine ninety five American. I think it's yep. fifty nine ninety five pounds. It's about that, yeah. And, and I think it's yeah. sixty nine ninety five euro. Uh, yep. You can get it from Bukes dot com. Hopefully, somebody in there uh, will be able to um, put in the website. I will also say that if people have questions about any any of this, if they want to talk to me. I love the human connection. I don't care, you know, I don't collect synthesizers. I collect the people who, who play synthesizers. You know, people talk about, people talk about, you know, oh, look at the synth, it's a limited edition. I've got news for you. You right now, you watching this, you are a limited edition of one. You are a unique music making machine and there's nothing else like you. And you are valuable just for that. You know, I, I my collection is people like Kim, who, by the way, is an amazing, amazing musician. He had a, a, an ambient uh, space music project called Dream Hub, which released four albums. I think they're on Bandcamp, which is just exquisite stuff. He never talks about his, his musicality. He and I played a cathedral in Copenhagen. It was one of the peak experiences of my life being able to play next to him. Um, people like Chris Meyer who is the only human being I know who can take a gigantic Eurorack synthesizer and do something with it other than fart noises, <laughs> um, makes these incredible albums, beautiful, lyrical stuff. These people, all um, it's the people, you know? Synthesizers, yeah. yeah, they're nice. But but the people who play them, everybody on this channel, that's really what gets me. And so for that human communication, Mike at Bukes dot com reach out i want to get to know you i'll answer questions i'll help you out with stuff anything to keep me from actually working for kim you know <laughs> um you know I, I love the distractions so so yeah just you know um i'm just this community is what matters to me and um yes thank you so yeah you know uh i'm here and and for 40 years i've been doing this i've been i've been giving people advice on synthesizers since well before the world wide web was invented i go i go all the way back uh, uh, to about 1985 that i've been doing this and i just love it it's it's meat and potatoes to me it's it's everything so anyway so let's get back to the other stuff but guys thank you so much for having me on here it's oh, just such a blast Absolute and, pleasure. And and uh, so so um, let's. Uh, oh, I don't know what Kim. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, and Kim, Kim says no because you know. <laughs> hey Kim, listen. I'm fried right now because I stayed up until two thirty in the morning last night finishing that interview transcription you wanted. So. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, anyway. Listen, Chris. Remind me. Is Ben off again next week? Yes. Yes. I think we might, uh, if if Mike is up for Happy it, should to. we get him back next week? Get him Happy back, to. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Happy to. Should we do that? Because I, I yeah. don't I don't want to rush through things uh, just for the sake of stuff. Um, but I, yeah, let's I think talk, let's talk. Let's talk. We were on the IK Multimedia, I think. Well, we were going to come to that, but um, I kind of do have to kind of wrap the show up for for my own selfish personal reasons fairly soon. Otherwise, I will be divorced. It's as simple as that. Um, <laughs> well, come but, on, we managed we managed four hours the other night. We did, and I you paid for, for that. that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
Sorry. That was that was more than four hours as well. Um, but four very enjoyable hours, I must say. And the fruits of that will um, will will come forth soon. Um, I'm, I also have to say, and, and again, this is a very selfish thing. Um, I love the book. I think it's fantastic. Thank you uh, for for making it. And I think lots of people will, will will say the same once they get to see it. I also want to thank you because. My review of this book is the first thing that I've had published uh, in Sound on Sound magazine. It's appeared hey, on the website Leg first. Up. Congratulations. Leg up. Congratulations. And it's, it's going in the print edition as well. May, so may it lead to many more. And thank you, by the way. It was it was a wonderful it was a wonderful well, review, you. and I appreciate the kind words. No, no, but no, I, I I appreciate getting the chance to do it. So thank and, you. And so we shall forever be connected. Um, and I should That's, forever be and grateful. Those, those connections are, are, you know, what I live for. Yeah. You know, being able to say that Trent Reznor sold me my first synthesizer. Um, <laughs> you know, nice guy, by the way. Was it a broken DX7 by any chance? No, no, it was not actually. <laughs> it was it was an Oberheim expander. Ah, uh, well, um, there you go. Yeah, he oh. used to work. He used to he used to sell retail um, uh, out in a, a little tiny uh, store in Cleveland called Pi Keyboards and Audio, and that's where I met him. Ah, uh, there you go. Anyway, yes. Anyway, uh, thank you, Wagyu, for another five uh, British pounds. Very, very welcome, and thank you very and much. Take indeed. care, Zaf. Thank you for popping yes. in. And, um, and by the way, Mark will be on the show in a few weeks' time. We'll come to that um, shortly. Um, yeah, I, I'd say I, I don't want to kind of waste anything. I don't want to rush through things. Uh, we can, if we want. Let's see. You know, we can quickly talk about the IK multimedia stuff because there was two or three things. Uh, Dom, sort of sitting. Uh, you have to go. Or? I'm going to have to fly. Yeah, because yeah, it's no bedtime worries. for Luke. Well, it's way beyond bedtime yeah, oh, for Lula May. Well, so, she'll love us for that. Anyway, she's up. downstairs. Yep. TikToking, how goodness knows what she's posted. Give Luna May a hug from Crazy Uncle Mike in the United States. Thank you very much, Crazy Uncle Mike. I really appreciate it. She will love it. Thank you very much. And, and thank uh, you for coming on. Thank you for stepping yes. in. Uh, really, 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 really appreciate show. it. What a show. Thanks, Mike. Amazing yeah. book. That's my Christmas present to me, sorted. Take thank care, you. Wait. And right. uh, of course, everybody <laughs> yeah. that's watching now, please go and watch Dom's show on Sunday, 7 p.m. Yes. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Yes, yes. Um, it, it almost permitting. wasn't going to go ahead. We've got D-Matt on, who's an amazing, cool. makes these amazing things, uh, amazing music and jams and stuff. He's on the top of a, a cliff with a guitar doing a live jam. Just brilliant. Wow. Um, but it's a bit last minute because with the, with the COVID thing going on yeah, in yeah. my household at the moment, we weren't sure. But it is going to go ahead. But there's it been no good. adverts yet. So please all turn up 7 o'clock on Sunday, Mr. Wiggly. Just click my link and you can go there and thanks yeah. guys i will see you again really soon take care appreciate thanks, it Dom. Cheers. Thanks. cheers dom yeah. stay bye safe bye. um let's also say thank you to synth addict um who just says mike is a great guest with a lot of knowledge and enthusiasm absolutely and it's worth and, and the fine. scary the scary yeah. thing is i'm just warming up <laughs> well <laughs> um it, keep it it's keep it. yeah 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 i know rob keep, yeah um so uh, <laughs> let me let me drag things back um sure. we've got the ik stuff yeah. Um, we were we were possibly going to talk about um, the um, uh, the the Fame Studio Reverb. We've got that new Split EQ that's come out mm. from Eventide, uh, and then of course we've got hmm, <laughs> Steinberg has finally uh. finally pulled their head out of wherever it was and gotten rid of the <laughs> e licensor. Yeah, that, that that's actually quite interesting that's because big news. Yeah, let's well let's let's quickly cover that one then, shall we? Because um, I mean, I've I somewhere in a cupboard, I have my original um, Steinberg dongles, the big old things that went in the LPT port on the back of the computer. Oh yeah, horrible, got, horrible things. I've got I got and I've got one for the line printer port, and I've got one for the ADB connection for right. the old Mac mice. Oh wow, yeah. <laughs> so I mean, they're they're really um, yeah, they've been with dongles for a long, long while, and I remember when they I. I jumped for joy when they said we're going to go onto a usb stick and then the way oh, that they implemented oh, that the e licensor was yeah. just it was abominable and they weren't the only ones arturia started out on those yeah yeah and they got rid of it very quickly uh yeah. you're welcome jim thank you so much yeah absolutely um it's, it's it has been the bane of many people's lives but the thing i find with licensing systems uh whether it's challenge and response whether it's a usb key whether it's a, a dongle of any other kind of fashion i mean you know famously you know the the dongle for logic is a mac you know you can't use it with, unless you own a mac um but there's there's always some kind of copy protection and i completely get why copy protection exists Absolutely. but there are good ways of doing it and there are bad ways of doing it and 
you know, mm-hmm. Steinberg have been okay. doing it badly for a long while. True story. Go for True it. story. I went to the Steinberg booth at a NAM show one year, had a half hour meeting. We were going to look at, at their new hardware. We were going to look at the upgrades to Cubase. We got through the hardware in the first five minutes. I spent the rest of my half hour watching one of the biggest experts on Cubase in the United States trying to get it to recognize him. <laughs> he literally, he spent 25 minutes trying to get Cubase, and, and I wasn't the only one there. He was trying to get Cubase to boot, and he just could <laughs> not convince it that he was who he said he was. And I'm just, you know, and we're talking about other things. You know, I managed to get through all the other stuff. I'm able to look at the features because they're able to walk me through it elsewhere. But I'm just looking at this, and I'm saying, you know, guys, I, I just, it's a nice, it's a nice DAW, and it would be even better if you could use it. Um, you know, yeah, I just, absolutely. and it's one of those things. And listen, uh, people who use Cubase, mad props to you. My dear friend, my successor as uh, uh, editor of Recording Magazine, Paul Vnook, he's Cubase live and die, and he does amazing work with it. I know that you can do it, but it just, it's one of those things that just, yeah, I just couldn't. Mm. So, anyway. No, I mean, there are, I mean, see, now I'm going to pop this out. Hopefully, it's not going to cause my system to crash. Um, so, I, I was told never buy one of these things. I've got the two of them. Yeah, do you know it's been the most reliable, robust, and useful kind of dongles that I've ever used. And the vast it, and the vast majority of them, you can authorize your hard disk if you want. Yeah, so you have options now. I mean, I I use this on my iMac, and then I have the software licensing on my MacBook. So Thanks, I Andy. To... Bye. Oh, Andy's gone. Um, so yeah, uh, I've always I've. I think I'm one of the few people that kind of actually like the iLock. Um, Propeller Heads, now Reason Studios, uh, had this thing called, what was it called? The Ignition I, Key. Yeah, I remember it. <laughs> yeah. Now, was... the Ignition Key worked in terms of really stopping the the cracking of Reason software. It really did that. But... It was a pain in the ass because you you could either have a software version of it or a hardware version of it, and now they've gone to this thing where you have to authorize online, which is kind of where Steinberg are going. Let me just throw this up onto the screen. So this is kind of what we're talking about: is that, that Steinberg have now uh, decided to start doing this Steinberg licensing, which is going to be uh, like an online activation. Uh, you authorize it once, and then it just kind of rechecks you every thirty days. Um, but there's also offline activation coming soon where you'll be able to uh, select a, a whole year, I think it says there. Wow, uh, golly gosh, I get, to use, I get to use my software for a whole year and I'll be in the middle of a session 364 yeah, yeah. days from now and bye. And that's the thing, isn't it? it it's I having to remember bombs. to do it. Yeah. I hate time bombs. I wasn't sure what Steinberg were going to do. And then when I saw this, I thought, well, it's better, but it's still, it's not great. And I don't really know if you can, if there is a method that will please everybody and, of course, satisfy well, the needs is, of Steinberg there, to protect their, 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 their IP. Well, there, there is one, but it's very hard to apply uh, universally. There is mm. one form of copy protection that the people who use it like. Um, but as I said, it won't work on the major players. It only works on, on, on smaller things, which is no copy protection at all. Um, if you're a small maker, trying to keep copy protection working is actually more costly yeah. in many cases than, than dealing with cracks. Yeah. And a classic example of that is Reaper. I, I mm-hmm. uh, love Reaper. And yeah. primarily because you can pay 59 bucks and it's a glorious program. It's always being updated. It's incredibly well supported. It's got a great community and you never have to worry about it suddenly deciding that it doesn't like you. Yeah. But that's hard to do. Apple, you know, to some extent they have, well, you know, you buy it from the Mac app store. So that's yeah. kind of locks you in. But, you know, things like Digital Performer and Cubase and Studio One, they have to do something. Because they, they're putting tons of money into development. And this is, yeah. by the way, something people say, you know, I you know, I didn't know that people still bought software. Well, you know, but when you're in my business, when you're a magazine editor, this again, it's not software, it's people. Yeah. You know, um, you know, knowing people who are going out of business and can't pay their can't pay their rent and can't feed their families because some idiot thinks that their software wants to be free. Yeah. 
you know, so so you have to really find a balance. And a lot of that is just being honorable. Mm. A lot of that is just realizing that you need Mm -hmm. to give these. And and by the way, it helps if you're doing iOS because that stuff is just like crack. Yeah. You know, three dollars here, three dollars there. I've I've got fifteen hundred dollars in in iOS software. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) I mean, I remember I went to to see Dave Spears once many years ago um, and we were in his studio just messing around and we were talking about software piracy and how it affected G4 software. And he said, oh, we've, uh, and this was some years ago. He said, I've just got this great new package that um, basically pings me every time their, this company's software finds a cracked version of one of their products online. And it can, it does, it kind of handles all the, uh, the tracing of where it's come from and then the removal of it from those services and and if you want to take it you know you know down a legal path they'll help you with doing that and I said do you really get that like does it really affect you that much and he showed me like you know the frequency of these things just popping up on different you know uh, peer-to-peer sites and and various other you know places Russian websites and I was just astounded at the the volume of uh cracked versions of, of just his software which you know back then was probably half a dozen products um or probably now probably less than that and it really does because people think g4 software they think oh that's a big company it wasn't you know back it's then dave. it was it's dave it's, and chris it's, it's dave and then and chris and a couple of others that they they bring on as you know contractors you know and and these guys you know these guys i mean dave's got a synth habit to feed yeah um uh, but you know, th- these are people and yeah. own force, you know, those, those guys, you know, I used to meet up with them and have dinner and, you know, and, and way back when the first three or four years that Ableton was making live, I was one of the few people in the audience when live 1.0 was demonstrated for the first time yeah. by, by, and, and Gerhard and I, we would go out, you know, I would, it was a, a yearly thing until about live six came along and Ableton was really taking off for four or five years before that there were, we just had a, a date at uh nam where i would we'd take our lunch break together and we'd go outside he'd have a cigarette and we'd talk and you know he eventually got to the point where you know he was real really making his bones but a lot of these other guys they're struggling yeah. i don't know how sean costello does it with valhalla dsp mm. because his stuff yeah. is so good and he charges so little yeah. yeah you know so anyway um yeah. but i mean hats off to steinberg they've they've yeah, seen they're, they're there. finally they're heading, they're acknowledged. heading in the right direction yeah and and fingers crossed you know that it'll get refined and, and so on. i mean i don't think there's ever going to be a perfect copy protection system that benefits the user and the uh ip holder um 100 you know you, you're gonna there's always going to be some kind of give and take and some yep. you know some people get it right i think i lock get it right i think uh for the most part um i know people who absolutely hate it don't ever well, want to put yeah, the, the, in but machine. the other th- the other thing that somebody pointed out in chat is you know it's right now it's very convenient to use the arturia or the uvi excuse me or the waves or you know whatever or spitfire their little you know app that yeah. you run but it's still got to talk to the mothership yeah and someday if those servers go away you're screwed that's it mm-hmm. that is it i mean and, and again yeah that that's happened in the past where um you know copy protection systems um i mean i remember when emu albeit under the um the banner of uh, of creative labs at the time uh, uh, they had emulator x and then x2 and x3 and then uh, when that organization just kind of or when creative labs decided we, we, we're done with this all emulator x software users and protis x was another thing the servers went away and that was it and you know i've seen people say oh yeah i can get emulator x2 or x3 working because we've managed to crack the code and so you can have a code and in a way you think well yeah that's justifiable because i've been screwed over and been left in well, the yeah. in the I lurch mean, and and alchemy mobile was the same way before, yeah, yeah. before ios got to the point where you couldn't do this there were programs like like i explorer and i funbox so you could actually back up your ipa files yeah, you could yeah. actually have everything and that's the reason why i'm never going to get rid of my first ipad because yeah. even though it's fairly slow running alchemy mobile it's stuck at ios 5 and yeah. i can always back it up 
So, you know, it's just, it's one of those things that, that, you know, you, you, that, that comes and goes, yeah. uh, and, uh, you know, um, it, it, it am what it be like. Indeed. I mean, we'd like to, I'd like to ask Ben because Ben's a Cubase user. I'd like to know what he thinks. Chris, have you got any thoughts on, on, uh, Steinberg's new system? Well, it's probably good that they're they're doing it, you know. Uh, so, <laughs> this is an issue that that has been um, not recent, but let's say over the course of whatever almost thirty years that I've been a musician, is a more recent issue because I didn't deal with any of this stuff before. I dealt with, you know, are, are, is Russia going to still be making vacuum tubes in ten years? <laughs> That's the kind of stuff I dealt with. But um, Soft tech, you know, baby. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Mike Matthews. So, you know, as I got into more of the recording world, as I was getting more out of the live world, you know, these things became a concern and these hardware dongles just made life ridiculous. I pretty much steered away. In fact, I did steer away from anything that that was. I I really had wanted to grab those uh, Lexicon plugins, the reverb ones, Mm -hmm. uh, because I'd always like, you know, the PCM stuff uh their reverb processors and then to find out what you have to go through to keep that stuff up is kind of nuts and having the dongle and it's like i don't want to plug anything else into my computer right now i use a laptop so it's a mobile setup so plugging things in and keeping that that mess going no thank you in fact um you know iLock was one of the things that i steered away from but now that they have machine licensing and cloud licensing yeah. that's made life easier and i've actually picked up plugins that I did not pick up before just because I was able to do it without the dongle. So hopefully it'll mean a more successful business for them because of it. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I I guess, um, but fewer, but fewer funny stories. Yeah. (laughs) But I I guess it'll all come out in the washes to whether Steinberg have made the right move or the wrong move or or whatever. And, And I don't think we'll ever be, be quite happy with, with what any company does. Um, because I just think that our use cases are, are all different. You know, there are people that go out gigging every week. So Ben, you know, this is why I'd, I'd like to know what Ben thinks. Um, you know, he goes out gigging with Cubase as well as in the studio. So how is this going to affect him? Um, and But there are people that don't, like me. I, you know, I'm, I'm in this room, so having an iLock plugged into my computer, I just forget about it. It's always there. And when I authorize something, it just goes straight to it. And that's I don't even have to think about it. Um, but other people do. And then people don't want to go gigging with laptops with these sticking out of the side because they get yeah. knocked and they break. And what happens if you have internet authorization and you're in a club and there's, you know, the internet signal is rubbish so there's all of these things to take into consideration and there's no one system that will allow for all of them so i've had pretty good luck with most things though um you know that not really having to worry about stuff like valhalla which i use all the time the one the one company that continues to give me problems of course you know what's going to be said (laughs) it's Roland, (laughs) and and you know like i I, so they're doing their sale right now you get the year of pro or ultimate and you get either one or two of their legendary series or any any of their synthesizers and so i'm like great i'll grab the ultimate and have another another uh two licenses it's cheaper than buying them outright fantastic and then i go to check to see you know i pull up logic and i go to check the, my synthesizer and see like mm, is this jd 800 going to be one of them that i'm going to choose or not and i want to play it a little bit and for like a day i cannot get anything to happen with rolling cloud nothing it, it, it's it's just yeah. down yeah and so and we go I through just, that i just i will never use cloud stuff ever i just i can't and and you know and i'm missing out on a lot Mm-hmm. One of my one of my music colleagues in in Denver uh, lives and dies by Roland Cloud and is doing phenomenal stuff, mm-hmm. but I I can't go there. I just can't. I don't want to beg a machine to be able to make music. Yeah, yeah. In that regard, you know, like Arturia and Softube and other people that are making Roland synthesizers and soft synths have you know really saved the day as far as that. And I and I've I've done started doing a lot more work with uh with those just because i know they're gonna work when i pull it up now i'm not in a situation where i you know i do some work with other people recording but i'm not in a situation where anything is of the moment they're in my studio we need to get stuff done so i can afford like to go ah crap it's down for a day or two and i'm i'll wait and do other stuff while in the meantime but for 
people that are relying on this for an income, yeah, I wouldn't touch cloud. You couldn't pay me unless unless it was to take a mini track and and bounce it to audio right there and be done with it. Otherwise, I wouldn't touch it. And I've just I've had so many things time bomb. I've had so many times when it, when an internet connection doesn't work. Um, you know, and every once in a while, I you know I want to do a Dallas jam. And so, you know, just having the hardware and having it being able to work. And that's the other thing I, with iOS, because it's a walled garden. I, I, and by the way, I am not one of these people who thinks that sideloading is a good idea. Mm -hmm. I think it's I think it's opening up the ecosystem to all kinds of danger. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, right now, uh, the, the App Store is a walled garden. You buy a, a, a plug in. It maybe costs you 10 bucks. And it's yours forever. You can always download it. The only time it ever goes away is if the company goes out of business. Yeah. And then they, they take it off the app store and then you have to figure out what to do. But, uh, you know, it's, it's just you, you want to have it there. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I, I was kind of hopeful that Ben might join us because he's just pinged myself and Chris asking how the show went. And we said, it hasn't went, it's going still. <laughs> um, and I said, if you can jump on, jump on. But he's um, he's not replied to that. Um, so well, we can we can hope. We can, uh, well, but... I, yeah. Well, I've, I've just been. Yeah, I'm, I'm also getting messages from downstairs. So, um, oh, <laughs> I think I might have to listen. Her. Have have the missus blame me. It's yeah, just, I will. Oh, every, no, don't worry. Yeah, I will. <laughs> everybody, everybody else does. <laughs> yeah, quite. Um, I mean, we were going to talk about um, T Rex, uh, the new T Rex three point five, Total Six Max, Total. Oh, sorry, Total Studio three point five, T Rex Fame, which is uh, one of the reverse. We can talk about those next week because they're quite some, mm. some really good packages. I love the T Rex and the Total Studio packages. They they really are very very useful. Um, there's also the Split EQ. And you'll get through it faster because I don't use IK software. Well, there you go. Uh, and we've got Split IQ from <laughs> Eventide as well, which is uh, causing a bit of a stir um, because it's doing some very, very cool stuff. Uh, UVI released a new uh, Quadra instrument as well um, that we love Falcon. Could talk about. Love yeah. Falcon. Big, yeah, well, yeah, big fans here. And uh, there's also the Clear Mountain uh, plugins. But yeah, we, we can we can shift those to next week. So I'll tell you what we'll do next week. Um, so we'll have yourself back if you want to come, Mike, and we'd be glad Happy to have to. you. Happy to. And, and and if I'm not talking about my book and shilling my book, I get to really cut loose. Exactly. So you can, you can be on your, your worst behavior because you, you'll be joined by this reprobate as well. So Kent oh will be God, on next week. With Spong? Me and yep. Spong? On the, oh, that's going to be a blast. Exactly. That's going to be several blasts. So that there you go. An, that may be an entire demolition company. Could be. Could well be. I think, yeah, I think that one will have to get uh, sleeping bags and uh, some food and drink in. That, yeah, and you're going to have go to convince you're going to have to convince your wife that, yeah. that it's going to go a little long. Indeed, the, and the other thing, I do need to kind of get to bed fairly early because I have a flu jab first thing in the morning, um, so I need to be at my best uh, behavior. Guys, thanks again. This was no, just so much fun. No. That's just yeah, honestly, really enjoyed it's been, it, Mike. Yeah, and, a lot uh, of fun. And, and, you know, I, I'm happy to support you guys. The, and everybody, like, subscribe, hit the button, hit the yeah. bell. Come on. We need you. <laughs> do that uh, thing. So, so yeah, do, do the thing. Um, and uh, to all of you out there, uh, if you didn't get your question answered, Mike at Bukes.com. Just Thank shoot you. it over to me. And please, feed my family. Buy my book. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. There's there's the email address on screen, Mike at Bukes.com. And if you want the book, oh, there it oh is I as almost well. forgot one more thing. Yeah, go for it. Witty. Ah, well, look what I got today. Again, oh, that's to worth get, two drinks. <clears throat> that's worth so this is the Witty Bug Pro. And this is the USB only one. So this is designed to plug into your uh, your desktop or your laptop and give you like the optimal witty connection between you uh, it and your instruments particularly useful for ipad users um and for windows users because windows uh, bluetooth midi support is virtually non-existent and, and, and ios and is tricky it's tricky so this will boost it and i've i've tested this on an old on that old ipad 2 or 3 whatever it is works a treat uh, obviously you need the camera connection kit for the usb mm, slot yep, yep. Um, but yeah, so I've got those and I've got a couple more with you hosts and, uh, yeah, I'm going to be trying those out over the weekend and, 
um, getting my Fairlight in tip-top condition because that's going travelling, which is going to be scary. Um, but we're going up to the National Science and Media Museum in Bradford on November 27th. There's going to be a whole kind of like event day. Um, we've got a Fairlight workshop. There's myself. Um, there's Manuela Blackburn from the Open University. Paul Harkins, who's wrote, written a brilliant book about digital sampling uh, from uh, Edinburgh Napier University. And we're going to be joined by Robin Scott, no less, of M wow. fame, um, whose Series 3 the museum has as their as their storage piece. But they wanted me to bring one up because they can't turn their, theirs on for lots of bureaucratic reasons. So I'm hiring yeah. a van and sticking a whole Series 3, all three or four flight cases of it, and uh, driving up to Bradford um, for that on the 27th. So if you're anywhere in the area, um, look out. I'll be posting links on the ProSynth Network page for ticketing. It will be free to get in, um, but it is a ticketed event for obvious reasons. And at the end of the day, I think you have to pay extra for this. They're going to be showing Sisters with Transistors in the main oh, cinema. Great movie. Uh, yeah great, so great and, and then there's a panel discussion with some of the people from the film uh, after that so it's gonna be a great day out if you're into your sound and they've got a great exhibition with loads of synths on display uh so more details are coming up of that um so there you go chris you got anything coming up over the next few days you're gonna be uh, busy doing anything you finishing off that arp yet yeah it's uh no i i won't have time for it until uh new year and then mm -hmm. hopefully get back to it. But I wanted to show it off. I haven't done it in yeah, a long time. Yeah. And we should also so, say, actually, um, that there was the embargo klaxon sounded at 4 p.m. UK time uh, whoop, today. Whoop, whoop. Whatever. Yeah, I don't know don't know what the embargo klaxon sounds like, but you know when it happens because like every mm. kind of named YouTuber synth type person releases and you get this glut of, uh, of videos uh, appearing online. One of the best ones, though, and, and this is all to do uh, with, of course, the uh, Korg ARP 2600M. The best one by an absolute country mile is this one from our very good friend Alex Ball. Alex Ball. Um, and so, yeah, he's, uh, his video is is there. I don't, oh, can you hang up the sound? Here we go. There we go. Lots of bleeps and bloops. And that gives you an idea of uh, how compact this little thing is next to a... Uh, what is that? That's the um, the TR-08, uh, isn't it? The Boutique, yeah, boutique. 808. Yeah. And so, the little SQ-1 next to it. Yeah, yeah it's that's it. Big, so, it's not a big machine. Not at all. But um, Alex seems to like it. So, um, yeah, go and watch his video. There, there are others available, but this is the one that we recommend. This gets the ProSynth Network stamp of approval. Um, and, and if you want to have some fun, uh, inundate all the uh, synth influencers and ask them if the jacks are chromed plastic or if they're <laughs> actually metal real nuts. Right. Because I haven't seen any one of them address that. They've all been silent. <laughs> oh. Well, we can talk about it next week. Yes, indeed. I think there's also the, there was an embargo on um, demonstrations of the, the new 700S as well, the Mini Korg. Uh, I think some of those are coming out soon i don't know anyway there you go up 2600m by alex ball go and watch that video on his youtube channel now do it um thanks to everyone who has joined us uh thank mm. you to everyone that has donated through the super chat oh and lady by aptitude means. Yes, oh, ladies back. It's, yeah it's still going and how long is this show <laughs> whatever it's, it is if it's me at an hour yeah it's mike metley time that's what it is <laughs> um, we don't we don't work off any regular time zone this we're in the mike metley time zone things just shift and change um but mike is going to be back next week so if you enjoyed him come back again um and he'll be on the show with kent spong next week so uh, another full house um lots more topics to discuss we won't have to worry too much about the book we've got that out of the way so uh, that's all cool we can get right into the weeds of lots of things including those things we mentioned earlier um and of course do join us on the facebook page if you haven't already but do yeah like and subscribe at the bottom does somebody else want to say something no uh, no, no make sure you post the link about the the show you were talking about though the, oh yeah the at the university of bradford oh the, bradford yeah the, the national yeah. science and media museum yeah i will do that as soon as i get it they're just uh, kind of finalizing a few details as we speak so i will okay. share that on i'll pr hopefully have it for next week's show but i'll share it on the facebook page uh the process network facebook page um if you've also if you've joined the facebook page and you're waiting to be approved it's probably because you haven't answered the questions we've got a few people sitting in the queue um mm -hmm. so if you're watching and you've requested membership you have to answer three very simple questions to prove that you're a human being and that you're going to play nicely and that's all it is so please do answer those and we'll let you straight in sorry mike you were gonna 
No, I was just going to say, uh, Rob, please apologize to your dear lady for me. I will. Um, because, and I'll show her this to prove that. Yes, please. Uh, <laughs> and and I, I, I hate to disturb domestic tranquility. And Chris, uh, give Sola an extra special hug. Absolutely. From a I fellow do. dog lover. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so um, thank you, Mike. Thank you, Chris. Uh, thank you to Dom, who has uh, shot off. Uh, and I hope that we send all of our best wishes to Mrs. Wiggly for a speedy recovery from yes, the, the nasty yes. COVID. And um, don't forget to tune into Ranzi tomorrow. So he's at quarter to two UK time, uh, whatever that is in the morning in the US, quite early. And then he uh, on Sunday, we've got Mr. Wiggly, 7 p.m. He's confirmed that that show will go ahead. So that's all ready to go on Sunday. And, of course, then you've got people like Gaz and Nick on Wednesday as well. Uh, so please do um, subscribe to those shows and give them all the love and do the same with us and hit the like button and all that kind of jazz. Um, I... We've managed to get through the show without too many technical difficulties, what with the temptation of using these new hotkeys. But I'm going to be spending the next week learning how to use those properly. So next week's show should be super slick. But until then, um, we'll be back next week with Mike. We'll be back next week with Kent Spong and, of course, Chris, as well as myself. We will see you all. Have a fantastic weekend. Good day um, and best wishes for a bright tomorrow. I can do that too. <laughs> um, so I haven't done. I've, I've turned. Oh, there you go. I've gone all left and so. I turned the reverb. This is kind of a. It's not the big echoing reverb that I used to have for Simon Synth Cave. Infinite Synth Cave. Haven't done that in ages. Simon is, by the way, he is well. He is around. Um, so, uh, hello, Simon, if you're watching. Um, I think you're flying back or you've just flown back from somewhere. Uh, was it India? I think it was Mumbai. Might be. Anyway, hope you're safe. Uh, landed safely. Anyway, um, thank you, everyone. Fantastic show. Loved having you on, Mike. Always great to speak. And Take care, everybody. We will see you all next week. Have a great weekend. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.